Wonderful. Okay, let's go straight into it. So here let's are the rules. It. Since this is a one-on-one, -on -one, you guys get more intro time than usual. Usually it's one minute, but you know, with eight people, that's only you can get here. So here, I will give you, if you want to make full use of it, five minutes to introduce uh, your uh, hypothesis or what your position is or um, your, your, your theory about what you believe on this topic. You will also, at the end, get another five-minute period of time to do an outro. Between that, it will be open, free-for-all, where you can go back and forth. My job will be to mediate and hopefully make sure that people don't interrupt the other too much. If I see some, that's just because you might really disagree with something you need to step in. Thanks but if I see too six. much of it, I will ask you to back off and try to give seven, the other six, some seven. time to speak. I'm here to mediate the conversation, not to uh, polite how nice you are to someone's topic or how kind you are to each other. I do think uh, watching how people act normally towards another person who disagrees with them helps actually inform people uh, on the individual streamer and on uh, the person holding that position. So I, I don't try to uh, moderate niceness. But if you do anything TOS, that's obviously outside the bounds of what I could allow. And that will be uh, reciprocated with a kick off the show and you won't be welcome back. Uh, you, The one other rule is you do not at other people in uh, the chat the other person you're talking to. You can talk to people in chat, just don't at the other individual you are debating in chat. So I don't want to see Demi Mama at Rob Noor, uh, you suck, and Rob Noor at, at her back, like, no you. And because then I got kicked both you off, and then I got to talk for China for two hours or something. So do we understand the rules? Do we have anything uh, we need to comment on or anything else? Okay. Uh, if I forgot anything, I might speak up or DM or something, but I think I got uh, everything I need to get out there. So... I am uh, happy to start this off with, uh, this time I'll start off with Demon Mama since let Rob introduce himself first. Yeah, absolutely. You, so you the, want to say the topic? Oh yeah, oh. Uh, yeah, oh yeah, uh, I, I would assume people uh, are here because they saw the title of the stream, but uh, I'll just repeat it for everybody. The topic is, is Antifa a terror group? Uh, this is not on Black Lives Matter. Some people have been asking, this is not on Black Lives Matter. Hey, this is on specifically Antifa. Is Antifa a terror group? Okay. Uh, Dimoa, you can take it away. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think this is a really good question um, because we've seen a whole lot of um, rhetoric about Antifa lately. Um, we've seen uh, everything from, you know, Donald Trump, the president, commenting on it to um, Bill Barr of the Justice Department um, talking about Antifa, Antifa, Antifa. But it, it, in my experience, it, it seems like a lot of people don't really know what Antifa actually is. And that concerns me because um, in, in history, we've seen a lot of examples of groups become scapegoats, become moral scapegoats, whether there's actually any truth to the claims that are being made about them. So I want to start this by talking about what Antifa actually is. We hear the term Antifa all the time, but a lot of people don't know what it actually stands for. What Antifa actually stands for is anti-fascism or anti-fascist. It is a political movement. It's a, a creed. It's a set of beliefs. It's something like saying the term Christian. There are many different types of Christians, and there are many, many different types of anti-fascists. Um, throughout history, there have literally be, been, at, at, at the very minimum, hundreds upon hundreds to thousands upon thousands of anti-fascist groups in various um, countries, and that continues today into the United States. Um, there have been um, anti-fascist groups which are um, strictly pacifistic. There are um, anti-fascist groups which are not pacifistic. Um, and I have a whole bunch of examples of those. And I, I don't want to bog down in way too many historical examples, but just to give some examples of, of, um, of groups that are one of the each type so that you can understand that I'm trying to give a very honest picture of what anti-fascism means and what it has been historically. The first identified anti-fascist group would be recognized as a violent anti-fascist group. This is called, uh, and pardon my pronunciation, Antifascistische Aktion, which, is a, which was a German group um, which fought violently against the rise of a, a very, very, very uh, barely known historical figure named Adolf Hitler. Um, in, in, uh, with the rise of Adolf Hitler and the- Could, could you clarify who that is for chat? Yeah, Adolf Hitler, was, uh, Adolf Hitler was, Adolf Hitler was the, uh, was a Nazi, um, who ruled, uh, who, who, who led Germany, um, during World War II and leading up to World War II. The first anti-fascist group, the group that literally began everything was indeed a violent group. Um, though I think that, um, violence, um, 
mind you that anti-fascist um, action, this group was um, predominantly Jewish. Um, so they had a very good reason to fight against uh, Adolf Hitler's rising regime and his rise to power. And many of them paid the price with their lives. Um, and that, and again, that's one example of a violent group, of a militant um, form of anti-fascism. However, many other examples um, exist that were not so. For example, the Jewish Anti-Fascist Committee here in the United States was a strictly um, nonviolent group of which uh, another little known historical figure named Albert Einstein um, belonged to. Albert Einstein was an outspoken member um, of the Jewish Anti-Fascist Committee. And these days we would say that he was a member of Antifa. Um, so I think that uh, going into this conversation um, and addressing the question, is Antifa a terrorist organization? The resounding answer is no. How could you define something like that? That would be like saying, is Christianity a terrorist organization? Um, even if there have been um, some groups of, of um, Antifa that engage in violence or something like that, to, to say that Antifa is a terrorist organization um, flies in the face of our understanding of, of, of anti-fascism on a very realistic basis, the actual history and beliefs. And it also isn't reflected in data that we have available to us today, which I'm sure we can get into to some degree. So uh, to sum it up, anti-fascism is a political movement that has had many different sects and flavors throughout history. There is no one single group that represents anti-fascism, just like there is no single group that represents Christianity. Um, or, or any other belief system. It is a set of beliefs, and people interpret those and build off of them in many different ways. So, no, Antifa is not a terrorist organization, and to say so could be, in fact, very dangerous. Okay. Uh, you uh, are done with your opening statement? Yeah, that'll be everything. Wonderful. I'm going to throw it over to Rob. You have five minutes. Okay, thanks. Uh, yeah, I kind of figured there were several ways that it could be gone about with this. I do believe that Antifa is a terrorist organization. It's an, I know one of the arguments to be made is, oh, but they don't have a central leader. And, oh, you could be in a different meeting. Uh, Rob, you're, you're, you're having a problem with your audio. You seem to be breaking up a little bit. Oh, no. Hmm. Okay, uh, let me just say then, what I'm going to do is I was trying to stream this, so I'll just tell people that I'm streaming with, go to Dylan Burns TV on Twitch oh. and watch the stream there. Uh, so it's more important that I uh, be able to be heard by you all. Okay, I'll be sure. If you want to, uh, you can always link your channel in my chat or uh, in the YouTube when eventually this goes up on YouTube. Okay, so tell me if this is better. Hopefully it's going better. Uh, uh, I, I can hear you. So far? Uh, you sound perfectly clear at the moment, yes. Okay. All right. Wonderful. So we'll try that. So, uh, yeah. So while it is true that they don't meet exactly in a group like an Elk Lodge or something like that, the truth of the matter is that the way we see Antifa being represented, particularly in the United States now, but also all throughout Europe, is an organization that is like the original Antifa, as Demon Mama correctly illustrates, was a group that used violence to achieve political goals. So what I want to do is first define what terrorism is since that's at the central of this. So I just Google, the first definition comes up from Oxford that says, the unlawful use of violence or intimidation, especially against civilians in pursuit of political aims. This is exactly, uh, by the way, you could go to other, if you wanna go to dictionary.com, it's all of them have to do with the idea of using violence or intimidation, particularly against civilians to achieve political aims. This is exactly how we see Antifa practicing in Europe and the United States right now. What they do is they use threats of violence or actual violence to achieve political goals. Many of their goals end up being anarchist or end up being communist. And one of the problems we have is that they're able to get away with this by saying, but not everyone, not everyone believes like that. Oh, it's just an ideology. It's not a group. I'll be able to provide evidence that shows that these are organized attacks, particularly in small sects and groups like Rose City Antifa, John Brown Gun Clubs, other organizations like that that identify as Antifa that have been organizing the riots that we've seen occurring in the United States all around here. When I say terrorist, uh, this is what I'm talking about, that all of these organizations under the banner of Antifa are willing to engage in intimidation or violence or to deflect for such to be able to achieve political goals. So Demon Moment says, well, it's like Christianity. We wouldn't say all sects of Christianity. No, it's not like that. It's like something because the one thing that all of these share is that they want the demolition of the organization and the structures of things like the United States. Albert Einstein wasn't with that. And I'll ask Demon Mama when we get a chance when the opening statement is to define fascism, since the one thing that I think she'll admit 
is that the thing that connects them all together is that they're all anti-fascist. So it'll be important to define what fascism means. And therein lies the problem. Uh, just like when we had discussions back in the, is it okay to punch a Nazi conversation? The problem is once you say that it's okay to use violence to fight fascism, you're a stone's throw away from saying, oh, and everyone I disagree with is a fascist. For example, Donald Trump is a fascist, or Republicans are fascists, or capitalists are fascists, or people that are against the lockdowns are fascists. Figure that one out. People that are against the government abusing their power to lock people down. Uh, we saw that there were Antifa riots against people that were against the lockdowns in Europe, for example. So to me, it's not the same as saying there's different sects of Christianity. When we say that there was a Jewish anti-fascist anti committee, but they weren't referred to as Antifa. And this is one of the tricks that we see being played by groups like Antifa. They name themselves something that seems reasonable, but we're just anti-fascist. And therefore, if you're anti-fascist, that must mean you're Antifa. Well, that's not the case. There have been organizations dedicated against fighting fascism that were not Antifa. What makes Antifa Antifa is the fact that they are willing to use violence and intimidation in order to achieve political goals, especially against civilian populations. And we can see this in effect when we talk about um, how we've seen organizations, people that have been out and done heinous things like the person who shot the Trump supporter in Portland, who was saying, I'm 100% Antifa. We can see this from the Department of Homeland Security that's admitted in an email that was released that they see that these Antifa organizations in places like Portland are organized and they are responsible for all these riots. A so lot of Gish I guess that's my opening Good. statement. Uh, I'm more interested in the back and forth because I have a lot of questions. Okay, so uh, I just want to confirm that is the end of your opening statement. Yeah. Wonderful. Okay, I'm going to open this up to free-form debate. Again, I will uh, only try to interfere if I think it has gotten too far off track, if either of you are interrupting the other too much, and, or if somebody I don't feel has gotten enough time to speak. So I will throw it now open. Uh, it's open debate. You may engage as possible. Oh, also, the hand raising is kind of pointless here since there's only two people. Yeah. Okay, so if you don't mind, Demon Mama. Uh, yeah, absolutely. What? How would you define fascism? Oh, yeah. Um. I mean... Like most, uh, like most belief uh, systems and political belief systems, there are um, multiple definitions. But in general, the sort of uh, uniting principles of what fascism is is a um, highly militarized, highly authoritarian, and ultra nationalist or hyper nationalist um, form of government. Um, it is a a form of government that consolidates power. Um, uh, fo focusing very much on national identity, sometimes on racial identity, depends on the f on the sort of flavor of fascism. We saw that, um, you know, in in Germany, um, fascism became you know Nazism, um, which you know fixated a lot on race. But yeah, in general, um, fascism has been you know sort of the many definitions and and versions of fascism that exist um, center around a a hyper nationalist, very militaristic and authoritarian um, style of regime. Um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, I think there are a, a lot of, um, examples of this that we've seen through history. Um, and part of the reason why anti-fascism as a belief system, as a set of beliefs rose up is because these, um, these sort of regimes, um, had like horrific outcomes in history multiple times, just leading to re unbelievable atrocity that we've seen over and over again. This type of consolidated power and um, otherization of people who seem different um, leads to some truly reprehensible things. I mean, as we know, what happened, the fa most famous example is in Germany, but of course, there was many other examples of fascistic governments that have done the same, even arguably that exist to this day. So yeah, Do you that's... think that there could be a capitalist system that is not fascist um yeah absolutely of course can you give okay so okay do you think the united states is fascist um i think that there are um very concerning fascistic trends in the united states but i wouldn't go so far as to say um like outright the entire united states is fascist um i have made the argument in the past that i believe that um in his actions donald trump is somebody who i would categorize as a fascist and i think that i would stand by those pretty strongly um he has taken an incredible amount of action to consolidate government power um he's expressed an ex a a very clear devotion to um, hyper-nationalism, going so far as to propose specific um, educational initiatives that go to teach patriotism, which to me fits the definition of that sort of hyper-nationalistic, very, very much focused on we are the best, this exceptionalism that goes beyond just simple patriotism. So okay, yeah, I so mean, I think there say, are trends. So, and, so it wouldn't just be the United States. So any country that wanted to 
uh, talk about patriotism and thinking their country was the best would meet your definition of fascism. Um, yeah, I think that, I mean, not just not just that, but of course you have to look at things holistically. Politics isn't a game of black and white. It isn't, um, it isn't uh, you know, that simple. I mean, I would say another government that I think of um, as rather fascistic is uh, something like um, Modi's India, for example. Um, I think that there are very, very terrifying fascistic elements in that government, which I would criticize in the same way that I would um, criticize fascistic elements in our own government. And I think that so, many people who consider themselves anti-fascists would also find problems with um, other, many other governments, not just the United right. States. Right. And so here's the point. So the concession that was just made is any country that wants to support patriotism and have pride in itself and support that sort of thing is fascist. And we know mm, that there are. No, that's not what I said, of, actually. Um, I, you know, it's pretty you clear. Said, I, no, you okay, asked. Please. Uh, I, yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, you can, you can try to characterize that way, but I very explicitly stated that like just patriotism isn't even close to an example of um, something that would bring. I mean, I mean, hell, like Denmark is a country that's patriotic, but they're not a country that's like ultra nationalistic. I wouldn't describe them as a country that fixates um, on their superiority, on their exceptionalism. Um, and I just think that if you would have to be supremely dishonest to say that um, Donald Trump doesn't constantly um, harp on such things or but that other leaders point. such as, say, you know, like I said, Modi fixates on nationalistic supremacy. Um, and again, um, there are going to always be sort of lines that we have to draw. Um, when you when you say when I when somebody says like, oh, a, a hyper nationalistic um, country I do think of um, I do think of a lot of there's a, a number of examples, and I think that certain elements of the United States certainly play into that. I don't think that um, that necessarily that means any patriotic government is somehow um, nationalist is like somehow fascist automatically. I just think that it okay, can certainly so we trend have this towards nebulous. That. So we have this nebulous definition of. Oh, that's uh, not very nebulous, can, though. Well, I mean, it is because the only examples you've been able to give were specific, like Donald Trump and Modi. Wait, that's the opposite. That without best. using their names, can you give me exactly the actions they've taken that have gone from just being patriotic to being oh, patriotic yeah, enough easily. to be considered very, very nationalistic? Easily. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if you want to talk about okay. not the United States, because I'm sure this will be a little bit less controversial, because I, sure. I, I know that I know you have support, at least to some degree, for some of Donald Trump's things, but I don't really support Donald Trump. So we can talk about something else. With Modi, um, the, the handling of how he's handled um, Kashmir in India, the Kashmir region of India, where um, there has been um, a, a direct targeting of people um, based on both their ancestry and their religious practices, down to the police literally beating people for practicing a religion that is not... Um, accepted um, by Modi. Yeah, that is fascistic in my mind. Absolutely. But that has nothing to do, like, I don't understand why the conversation of patriotism was even mentioned by you in the first place then. Like Wait the a idea minute. Of Absolutely, it does. If you're if you're targeting someone because they are Kashmiri, which is a which is a region of your nation that you don't believe is uh is truly in like Indian in this example, then that is absolutely hyper nationalistic. It's putting nationalism above anything else. It's targeting people and and boiling people down to where they happen to be born. That's abs but again, absolutely. You so. started off. You started off talking about patriotism, undue patriotism, and I don't yeah. think that we see examples in the United States where we've gone into certain sections of the United States and said, we're going to arrest people or we don't like them for the color of their skin. I mean, I could, like I could give you I right that now, that I mean, I could give you right now, um, a statement, um, from, I believe it was, um, acting secretary, Chad Wolf, um, regarding the black bagging of protesters where he openly said that. So where he openly said that, yes, we kidnapped, um, protesters without charges and threw them into an unmarked vehicle that was openly admitted to by the government this is a matter of public record so that that is um and, and keep in mind city. keep in for the, wait wait because but, of nationalistic reasons that's wait absolutely yes absolutely when you when you hammer on um when you are willing to go to the level of um arresting protesters um saying oh these are uh anarchists or whatever um and they're not patriotic they're against our country when you're going to target them as if they are um as if they are like committing treason um, and 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 do so extrajudicially. That's absolutely a definition of hyper patriotism. It's where you believe that the state has supreme power over every single person within. And I can't believe that you would stand by that. Like I, I guess, so this I guess is, that surprises course, me. What it is, it's going to be uh, an interpretation as I've seen over and over. We see Antifa and their tactics engaged in supreme violence, burning down buildings, attacking law enforcement officers, uh, attacking inner city, uh, particularly people of color communities, uh, 
burning down residential areas, shooting people and then celebrating for the shooting of them. And then the defense is, well, we have to do all of this because I mean, that's a lot of allegations that were, arrested that were peaceful. Protests. Wait, wait, but, yeah, but wait a second. Wait, but that's a that's like a that's like a lot of allegations. And and none of those um, none of those actually address what you were talking about. This is like a, a pivot to something else. What I was. No, you it's were, not wait, a pivot. Wait, hold on. Let me let me finish. Um, sure. What you were talking about was whether or not. Um, we see trends of hyper patriotism in our country, the sort of things which anti fascists, people who believe in anti fascism, would understandably, being that they oppose fascism, which is a hyper patriotic, ultra nationalistic um, form of, of authoritarian government, that they would want to fight against those trends. Absolutely. Now, does that mean that any tactic that any individual person who might believe in anti fascism does is okay? Absolutely not. But that doesn't mean you can out, like, you you've pivoted to a different position of, of questioning we're not we're no longer no, we're talking about well, yes because yes because originally no, you were, you were asking about whether making... they're wait wait well, well, wait 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 let's let demon mama finish why she sure. thinks so and i'll give you some time to respond right sure. because we were talking about whether or not there are hyper patriot examples of hyper patriotism the the um examples of of sort of cracking down um bringing down law and order hyper authoritarian language um justified through hyper patriotism and if anybody doesn't believe me that this is the case that there are these trends whether or not you believe that america is a fascist country or whether you think it's trending that way or not regardless just watch the just watch one night of the rnc literally walls of american flags as someone is screaming about how uh teachers unions are undermining the republic these this is absolutely a trend whether you agree with that or not it would be foolish it would be foolish and dishonest for you to say anything other than yes this is indeed hyper patriotic i do want to throw this back over to rob yeah thanks uh, this is exactly the point i was getting to for the audience you can see how there's this constant conflation of what does hyper nationalism mean at first it was all oh, being patriotic and then believing in the idea of exceptionalism and then it was well no it's just targeting certain minority groups because they look different or they're not the same ethnicity and that's what's uniquely bad then it was well there were peaceful protesters that were arrested and the point i was making is yeah but that takes doesn't take into account the violent protesting that would happen and even if i can concede that there were peaceful protesters that probably were arrested that didn't deserve it uh, there were we're talking about a country that's on fire because of groups like Antifa that are engaged in so much violence. Of course, there are going to be innocent people that were out there with the violent rioters that would be arrested in situations like that. But now you can see that it's changed to, oh, there were a lot of American flags on the on the. Wait a minute. So no, 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 no. You're, 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 let's, 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 Sure, uh, go ahead. There were a lot of American flags over there, and people were criticizing the teachers' unions. And this is true. If you go to groups like Rose City Antifa, they talk about this. For example, some things that could be fascism, they say being anti-communist, opposing unions, and things like that. So okay. they broaden the definition of what fascism is out to mean so much. In fact, the original anti-fascista group that was in Germany used to consider all forms of capitalism exploitation and said that that was fascism. So they originally the original antifa group that used violence as demon mama admitted said that capitalism was part of being fascist and so we can see that this is exactly the problem we've already conceded that there are many people in antifa that are willing to use violence to fight fascism and now we can't even get a clear articulation of what fascism is it's ever growing well if you have too many american flags if you oppose teachers unions if you think that the america is exceptional and it's the greatest country in the world all of these are symbols of fascism uh they say well donald trump is fascist and by extension, I haven't heard Dima Mama say this, but uh, I'll ask her in a moment. Uh, Trump supporters are fascist. And this is the problem with an organization like Antifa. Remember, go back to that definition. Don't worry what is that. terrorism? The unlawful use of violence and intimidation, especially against civilians in the pursuit of political aims. This is what Antifa does. They go out and they say, well, the United States is fascist. Therefore, we're justified in burning down buildings. And it culminates in actions like we saw in Portland with the death of Jay Danielson who was not only executed by someone who said, quote, I'm 100% Antifa on his social media, but then members of Antifa later that night okay. celebrated, and I have the video to prove it if we need to, that they were glad that a fascist was killed that night and were celebrating it. So an innocent man gunned down in cold blood because he was a Trump supporter, and this group cheers that on. And we have okay. to somehow believe, well, this isn't trying to use violence or intimidation against civilians to achieve a political end. I heavily disagree. Okay, I mean, you talked about quite a lot of different things there, and um, just just so that we set the record straight, what you asked me for was what a you asked first for a definition of fascism, then you asked for a definition or examples of hyper patriotism, which I have shown quite 
few of. And keep in mind that hyper-patriotism and ultranationalism is a part of the motivating factors of, um, of fascism. You seem very fixated on that. Um, also, I just need, just before we go too far, I really, really feel like it's very dishonest for you to... Um, to say that there was an, an execution of someone um, in Portland. Um, that is very loaded language um, for, as far as I know, um, in fact, um, I, I know for a fact that uh, this has not been litigated in court because the police actually killed the suspect in that killing. So we don't actually know what happened. Video evidence of it, which I have reviewed extensively on my own, um, on my channel, You, anybody who doesn't believe me can go do this. There is no clear... Um, information as to what happened there. Was someone killed? Yes. Is that a terrible thing? Absolutely. But it is completely dishonest and, and, and slanted and propagandistic for you to frame that as an execution. And likewise, I think that you trying to link um, Antifa, which again, by every single um, by every single metric that we have um, is a very broad and very diverse political movement that has existed over the last century um, that has had many different people who thought many different things as a single group that can then be labeled as terrorist is 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 wild. And I want to um, I want to just point out a couple of reasons why I think it's very dishonest for um, and not only dishonest, but also somewhat dangerous Um uh, sorry, uh, dangerous to to try and label a group as a terrorist, especially using like a dictionary.com definition of terrorism. So real quick, um, I just wanted to bring up a couple of um, topics concerning the definition of terrorism. So um, as you probably know, maybe you don't, um, I know you're working off the dif dictionary.com definition, which is fine. That's fine for a lot of colloquial talk. But as we're talking, you know, more in depth here in politics, I'm more interested in having a more solid definition of patriotism, of uh, not patriotism, sorry, of terrorism. The thing is, terrorism is actually incredibly, incredibly hard to define. Um, in 19, uh, let me see here. Let me just get the date real quick here of the uh, exact date that this happened. One moment here. Uh, in 1996, for example, um, the United Nations General, As General Assembly convened in order to make an attempt to define terrorism um, in a in a fashion that that the that countries could agree upon, so that we could. This was uh, before we really had the war on terrorism and whatnot. That process has been completely deadlocked. I mean, literally, um, unprecedentedly deadlocked. Um, because as it turns out, defining terrorism is really hard. And countries, including the United States, have backed away from or held off from defining terrorism um, because a lot of their own actions could be defined as terrorism. Um, and this actually gets even worse when we dig into stuff like, for example, the Patriot Act. Um, the ACLU has a, a wonderful, wonderful um, uh, analysis of the way that the Patriot that the, the Patriot Act defines um, terrorism, keep in mind, not for the purpose of crime, um, the Patriot Act is only talking about whether they can surveil. Um, but groups as as peaceful as um, civil rights movements would fit the definition, um, like the Rainbow Coalition, for example, is one that they brought up, that could potentially, under the Patriot Act, be considered a terrorist group and therefore subject to wiretapping of the individual members' phones. That's unbelievable levels that you're willing to go. And this is a, mind mind you, this is lawyers. These are lawyers who do law for a living who wrote this entire document opposing the way that the, the Patriot Act defines terror, domestic terrorism. Keep in mind- That's that why, that would be why I'm not using the Patriot Act. In fact, I'm heavily opposed to the Patriot Act. I see a lot of similarities with what happened with the Patriot Act with a lot of the lockdowns we're seeing today. And I'm against that as well. The point is, that's why we shouldn't rely on the government to tell us what terrorism is. And this is a sophist Except. point that people try to make. Well, we can't understand what the word means or it's dangerous. No, it's a very simple definition. If no, you're using I, violence- I, 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 I reject that. Like, make a political point. Well, well, I understand British. you would want to reject that. Well, let me ask you some other groups. Do you think that Nazis are terrorists? Can, or a terrorist group? I mean, I don't know. Like, that would be really hard. Like, it would, like, I mean, I think somebody who's just like your grandpa, like a, like, like, for example, I have, I have, a, I have had a family member in the past who was a Nazi. Um, do I think they were a terrorist? No, they were like, 
very, very offensive on a personal level and incredibly horrible to be around. Um, but they never engaged in anything that I would consider terrorism. And therefore, I would be very careful to label that person a what terrorist. What would you consider terrorism? That's oh, the point, Oh, I right? mean, I, I, w I am very careful with how I determine terrorism. I would think but something you, like a so pretty clear... Think anything oh, terrorism. a pretty clear example of a terrorism would be like, I don't know, like flying the plane into the into the um, World Trade Center. Absolutely. Okay. Like, I think that's an so example of terrorism. So what if instead terrorism. of flying a plane, what if instead they would have shot people on the street for the same reasons would that be terrorism i mean i think it could like be like the san bernardino yeah. shooting but is I that mean, terrorism uh i mean i think that could be absolutely uh that there is okay a, what yeah, if instead yeah. of that let me ask you this what if instead of that they threw molotov cocktails at state buildings for the same reasons for the same al-qaeda inspired reasons would yeah, that I'm, be terrorism i think that i think that could be terrorism but i think here's the thing okay, though so but well hold on well hold on so, okay, because so uh, hold on you gotta let her reply rob rob, rob, reply. rob reply. i want to let her clarify her answer though yeah I yeah okay. be able to clarify yeah, a lot of these things could be defined as terrorism but here's the thing when we're talking about um defining someone as a terrorist it is it is childlike to, to try and think that it is going to be divorced from um, any sort of impact on the outer world. Like, example, like for example, I mean, how would you feel if I walked into this conversation and accused you of being um, um, a Nazi? Or worse, what if I accused you of being a murderer? You would think that that would be pretty irresponsible. What if I accused you of something like being like a rapist. Wouldn't that be terrible? These are things that could impact you really, really bad. In fact, accusations, uh, outright accusations with no evidence and stuff can damage a person's life. I'm sure you will agree with this. I'm sure you'll agree that spurious okay, accusations- if I could respond, you've had quite a long time well, to talk. Well, I mean, uh, you, yes, wait, hold on a second. Yeah. But, but Rob, like you, 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 alleged a lot of things and you asked me a number of questions you and just I had a seven minute uh, walk well, that you well, went well, on well, demon mama, i'll give you i'll give you I'll, I'll give you 30 seconds to finish your point then i'm gonna throw it over to rob okay okay yeah um it's it's just uh it, when you label somebody a terrorist um there are some pretty rough things that can happen to somebody who's labeled a terrorist in our country for example like i said with the patriot act there's an incredible amount of invasion of privacy but i will point to there's this thing that a lot of people uh, may know about called the Iraq War. A lot of people died in the Iraq War. A lot of people died under allegations of terrorism, under the guise of going against a war of terror, which at that point had no proper legal definition. So that war was justified using a moral panic over terrorism. And we didn't even attack the people who were responsible for it. We attacked completely unrelated people. Okay, that's 30 seconds. I'm gonna give it over to Rob. Okay, so a, a nice, impressive filibuster block. I got that. So the point that you just made, wouldn't it be terrible to call someone a rapist? Wouldn't it be terrible? How about this? Would it be terrible to call someone a fascist? Oh, that's what Antifa does. It just calls people fascist. Or would it be terrible to call organizations systemically racist? Oh, that's the entire idea behind all of these riots in the first place. So I find it very ironic. The same well, side I mean, that's, that, that seems like minimizing. The, the I'm same finished. side that wants to put harmful labels on the other side and say, you're fascist, uh, you're Nazi, you're racist, you're systemically racist, you're patriarchal. The same side that wants to do that is now all of a sudden has a problem when we look at people that are firebombing, as you admitted, throwing a Molotov cocktail at a, uh, at a uh, state building would be considered an act of terrorism if Al-Qaeda did it. But then you no, say, I but think it's it could be, yeah. Uh, okay, then you say it would be harmful to label someone who did that in the name of anti-fascism to label them a terrorist. I say that no, this I is think, ridiculous, no, and it's clearly trying to you. change the definition in watered no, down. I, I think you're. I think you're. That the action itself wait, wait a was second. terrorism. Well, well, let's let's, excuse, let's excuse, let Rob finish. Wait, right, I, I, let Rob finish. Let's have a back. Right, we could have a back and forth if you weren't doing finish. six minute blocks, but I have to do a six minute block to keep up with yours. Just to make sure we're each getting sort of equal time. So when you admit like that the throwing of a Molotov cocktail, if it was done by Al Qaeda at a state building, that would be considered terrorism. But you say, oh, if someone does it for a different political motivation, then we have to be hesitant to call it terrorism. You say that would be like calling someone a rapist without proof. But I have proof. That's the point. We see the person that was labeled that labeled themselves Antifa walk up and shoot someone. You say that that's not an execution. I agree that there we should hear this out in a court of law, which sadly will never happen because apparently that gentleman who shot and murdered, I believe, executed Jay Danielson, also opened fire on police and got himself killed in that manner. But Listen, we saw now hold on a second. Now hold on a second. Let, Demo, I swear you have time, I swear. Uh, what I saw when looking at it was we heard My them goodness. clearly say He's we got one here and they said there, then they shot, then they left. It didn't appear that there was anything that justified that type of shooting. Again, it's ironic from people saying, well, wait, we have to hold judgment on this that have the exact opposite take if we see law enforcement unfortunately have to execute someone. 
So I just think that it's funny that, that all of a sudden the definition changed. Regardless if we call it an execution remember, or not, Remember when we talked about this. In that particular situation, we saw people talk about that self-identified as Antifa later worm. that night celebrate the death of Jay Danielson and say that it was the killing of a fascist. So this was Antifa, a person who self-proclaimed being an Antifa, murdering someone. And then other people, I don't think that they had any more clarification than me or you have at the time, the people on the street. Yet they celebrated this death as the death of killing a fascist. Now, you talk about the dangers of labeling someone a terrorist, yet flippantly you say people that support American exceptionalism or have a problem with teachers unions or have too many American flags don't worry. may be fascists. We see here what happens when groups like Antifa think this. you're fascist. If you're murdered by one of them, they celebrate and say, well, you were a fascist, you deserved it. So I think that it's just interesting that we see that it's now boiled down to, well, can we really define what terrorism is? Yes, I used a definition that I thought was quite simple, that you could go through many common man sources that actually are tasked with defining terms like dictionary.com, Oxford, Merriam-Webster, and others that all say the key is when you are using violence or intimidation to achieve a political goal, that is terrorism. Yes, I won't disagree with you that the United States government has engaged in regime change wars around the world that are absolutely disgusting and use terrorism as a reason for doing so. But that doesn't mean that we can no longer label anyone terrorist right. that you. are clearly terrifying the civilian population of this country by using violence and intimidation all across the country. Okay, so I want to open this back into free form, so we I I don't have to pass it back and forth every five minutes, and so I'm gonna pass it back to free form, and I'll probably start with a free form off of Demon Mama because he obviously will want to respond. Yeah, I mean, there's there's been so very much that was said there that I just really think is just it's it really feels like. And, and I'm not trying to be harsh here, but it does feel like you're propagandizing a bit. Because here's the thing, um, you know, in, in coming into this conversation, I brought up the the, the historical context of, anti, of, of Antifa and anti-fascism as a movement. And then when, when you start to talk about specific examples, you're willing to make huge jumps in judgment that I think are really, like, like are really dishonest and, and not fair. And I think that that's misleading. Like for example, constantly, like you multiple times have framed what happened in Portland, which of which the video evidence is almost nothing. Keep in mind, um, you know, like that, that just because two people got in a fight we have no reason we have no way to understand what it was it could have been that this uh this supposed antifa guy that you're talking about was the most murderous person in the world that's very possible it's also possible he acted in self-defense we will never get to know that because he was executed by the police and you oh, also you just uh, used the uh, execute. hold on Didn't a second you? wait a minute he was executed by the police how? do you know how many do you know how many bullets were shot what does it matter? Did, do you know how many 30 to 40 bullets are shot? Yes, that is that is what we call an execution. Absolutely. Do, do you know how many was shot at uh, they, they, he shot at them? No, because there's no evidence that he shot at them. There was oh, no so there is no was, evidence so that he shot at them. Proof, so without proof, you'll say that he was executed. No, but then you no, 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 the because there's thing. a difference. You see, police aren't supposed to kill people. People are not. Yes, they the are. Police are firing at them. No, the police yes. are not. The police are not Judge Dredd, my dude. Listen, I understand if you would prefer the, a world where the police are supposed to be judge, jury, and executioner. But when the police unload on somebody and people nearby are screaming that there was thirty or forty shots fired at him, and we don't have evidence that he shot back, we do a thing called presuming innocence. And that, and when the police, when the representatives of supposed law and order are the ones who killed somebody, that is absolutely fair to call that an execution absolutely absurd, it is the state wait a minute this. that is the definition of an execution that is the no, definition the, the so is, i don't is, i don't appreciate your dishonesty opposite. you actually have this exact opposite see we've given the monopoly of violence to the state this is something that the civilized world did a long time ago and it was actually a really good thing we didn't want vigilantism we didn't want people just going around like the wild west shooting stuff so yes, we agreed but i am not alleging allow law enforcement to have basically the monopoly on use of force like that so when law enforcement act, when law enforcement results in someone dying there are legitimate situations when that could be warranted such as if that person fired back at law enforcement that yes, would be a but, legitimate but yes so yes no wait 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 rob rob this is an well you see I, wait, wait, Rob is, is going off on okay, another okay, issue. Okay, 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 okay. So this is too contentious for me to just let this be open. And we might have to do back and forth for a, a little bit now. Rob, well, I just finish. feel like it's like it goes oh, okay. from... Okay, okay, okay. Uh, Go ahead, Rob, please, please, please. That's fine. 
Okay. Okay. Demon Mama, would you like to respond? Yeah, I just, I, I, I really want to resist us jumping from one thing to another really, really fast, especially when it's something like this. You see, in this circumstance, we've presumed the innocence of the person. That's what you do. I never stated that this was a, like, never once did I in this conversation state that, that the guy was, uh, was, was purely acting in self-defense. What I stated is the fact, which we don't know. What we do know, what we do know about the second situation is we know that the police killed a man and there's no existing evidence right now, which you would think that evidence would exist. Perhaps it will come out. And at that point we can then say, maybe it wasn't, but there's no existing evidence right now that he shot back at the police. There is evidence that the police shot being the police, being the supposed arbiters of law and order, shot 30 to 40 rounds into this guy. So okay, well, that is a fair, you that is fair. You might not know, but you're admit, so then we, you're just saying there could be evidence, but I don't have access to it. Yet you're very criticism of me in a video that we can see, which there is no evidence that this Jay Danielson shot back at the guy that killed him. We see that and you say, well, you can't call that an execution. You so can't hand, you because it's evidence. not. This, it just shows. The Wait, do you not know what an execution is? You're willing to presume people guilty. You presume that the cops did something wrong because this you haven't wild. seen evidence that said that they were shot back. Therefore, you presume their guilt. But on the other hand, you say, oh, despite the video evidence that we all saw of this Antifa person going up and shooting someone that didn't draw a gun on them, we can see the video of it then running. If it was a legitimate shoot, why didn't he stay and talk to the police? Are so you all aware? the evidence we can actually see with our own eyes, you say, no, 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 no. We have to presume innocence. No, wait, wait, wait. You think the the, wait, 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 wait. Hold on. Something you said there is is again playing into this 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 narrative that you are that you are writing to justify your positions. I am presuming the innocence of the people involved. See, there's this thing when we give a when we have given a monopoly of violence to the state when the state can can has the weapons when the state is able to go in and enforce the law we have to presume the innocence of the vi of of the people who are being brought into the law we cannot because he is dead also numerous local sources i have a number of these numerous local sources witnesses to the event the people whose testimonies we have because there was no video video footage of the killing of um what's his name um uh, michael rinell i think his name is multiple witnesses there reported that they did not hear the police uh, issuing orders to him before they opened fire so what i am saying is is that both of these situations is are are very murky but you are trying to use them to justify the idea that all of antifa is violent but that's not what it says you do not have the evidence to go from a person died in portland in an altercation which we don't know the details of because the video is incredibly unclear and and then they were killed by the state before being able to go to trial for whatever reason, they were killed by the state, even if it was, in your mind, justified. They were killed by the state. He will never be able to go to trial now. So, we don't know. And you are using this as a as proof to try and, and make this claim that Antifa is a terrorist organization. And again, I will just point out that you're making a huge allegation to claim that all people who are involved in Antifa, which would include, mind you, people like Albert Einstein, um, are, are somehow terrorists because of a a situation we have no evidence could to prove would be an example of terrorism that's absurd and okay so okay uh, so uh i feel that that's a good part to discuss i was not using this specific situation to show that everyone in antifa is violent well you were you did to show, no that's not what i did i brought it up to show the point i was talking about wasn't just the execution it was also the celebration by antifa that did not have the evidence that said that they celebrated that a fascist was murdered Wait, celebration? Wait, wait, the wait. The reason that I got hung Sorry. up on this execution part was just pointing out your hypocrisy. Because on one hand, you say, no, 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 no. Someone that shoots someone's innocent until proven guilty, so I'm uncomfortable saying execution. And then the very next thing you do is say, oh, but these police executed him. Why aren't they innocent wait, until proven guilty? Wait a guilty? minute. Wait a minute. Because they admitted to it. They killed the man. This is wait, a matter so of public... Wait, 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 hold on. Hold on a second. You're, you're, you're not understanding the basics of this situation. The police killed a guy. They admit they killed the guy. Now, as to what actually happened, we don't know. But the, the police carried out an execution on a guy. Whether it was justified or not, that is what it is. We do not know what happened between Mike Rain Reinhold and... and, uh, and um, I, I, so you I, don't know if Reinhold comment. killed Danielson. What's that? You don't know if Reinhold killed Daniel. We don't know he that. Admitted it to Vice. Wait, he admitted wait, it on Vice. Wait, 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 wait a minute. We we don't. But here's the thing. We we don't know what happened. We don't know what happened. Yes, I think it's fair. I think it's safe to assume that 
Mike Reinhold was the one. To be fair, he wasn't cr tried in court, but I think it's fair to assume that given his um, interviews and whatnot. But that doesn't mean that doesn't mean that we know what happened there. And you were using that. You don't know what wait, happened wait, 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 wait. Hold on, hold on. You, you don't were, know what the wait a minute. The wait, but we do. That we do. No, it's you a public, don't. It's a matter you of public. Don't know. You're just lying. So You're wait. Lying. You so hold on. Let me ask you something. You, no, no, no. you said evidence could come out that he shot. You're, You're literally not people. understanding the difference between two situations. In one situation, we have no, two. Wait, 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 wait. No, no, no. Let me finish this, please, because this is really important to your argument with, that you be clear on this because you're making huge allegations and you're not actually putting together an argument that follows. So keep in mind, what we're talking about between Jay Danielson and and Mike Reinhold is a an altercation that occurred on the street where there is no, uh, where there was incredibly, incredibly unclear video footage from a bystander, not a engagement between the state numerous officials of the state who did kill somebody they did open fire on him we're talking about two separate situations and you are acting as if they're not this that, that they're the same situation but they're different and that is why there's a different outcome for each one again the, though the, none of so this wait but this. none of this so is relevant wait you've admitted that you don't know what happened in either situation yet you're comfortable calling one an execution and you criticize me for calling the other an execution no that's, I criticized the similarities what I criticized you for what I criticized you for was calling something that we don't know what an execution is an execution and you did this in service of trying to make an argument that antifa was somehow terrorists but that doesn't first of all that wouldn't prove that antifa is a terrorist anyway and secondly you don't know what happened there we do know we now again i will restate this because i just listen i just want you to understand what's being said that mike reinol was executed by the state that is a fact that is a fact Define execution an execution is when the state kills somebody. Oh, so an execution yes. is only when the state kills oh, somebody. Oh, no. I mean, I think you can have a, a, a like sort of colloquial execution. Like, for example, if somebody made somebody get down on their knees and, and hurt them or shot them. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want to be like TOS or whatever. But but absolutely. But when we understand an execution, it is absolutely definitionally an execution when the state decides to kill somebody. Now, you might be able to, we might have another conversation, another night, not tonight, I would hope, whether an execution is justified, but it absolutely is an execution. That is a matter of fact. Wait, 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 wait. That's not a matter of opinion. That's a matter of fact. That is a matter of fact. So what you just said is that if a cop, if a cop sitting in the street like these ones that were shot in Compton gets shot twice in the head like the ones that were shot in Compton. They pull their gun out, fire back, and kill the person that was there. They executed that person. If that's your definition of execution, it's so watered down and meaningless that it doesn't matter. Because clearly in that Compton situation, they would have been justified. You're talking about literally a completely different circumstance. You, you, but, you, but you don't understand. Like This is something wait, that I wait, see no, commonly no, no. that people do. is oh God, When I ask so them to define something, they'll just say, they'll make some definition. Well, when the state executes someone. Or Wait, when the state someone, that's what that's an execution an is, though. When the state, okay, well then, yes, absolutely. They would have so I'm just asking. So that situation in Compton, if the cops would have shot back and killed that person, they would have executed him. I mean, if they, sh if 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 they had had been able to take him yeah i guess that would be an execution if they killed him of course okay, thanks. Then, absolutely the term's meaningless. wait 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 a minute 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 no 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 that is that is not a fair accusation to just say my mean my a thing is meaningless let me ask you this would you not call it an execution when say um john wayne gacy was killed by lethal injection by the state Sure, that's an execution. Despite the fact that, I mean, I mean, if someone hunts they down arrested someone him. their political beliefs and murders them uh, in cold blood, that's also an execution. Yeah, I mean, I think that would be fair. But the thing is okay. that we have that here's the thing. Here's and again, this is what you're failing to address. And and by because you fail because you fail to address it, it's undermining your entire argument, and is, which is the idea that you refuse to acknowledge that it is a matter of fact that the state did execute Michael Reinald, whether you think that's justified or not, listen, whether you think it's justified or not, it's a fact that they did. It is not a fact as to what happened between Mike Reinald and the other person. We do not know. Nobody knows that. We might I'm never know. That, wait, 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 wait. We might never know that. Of execution. I'm not okay. agreeing with your definition no, of execution. So your is definition your... of execution is any time a police officer kills right. anyone, even if it's okay. justified, then it's let's, an execution. Let's, let's, I don't agree with that. Then let's change I think things. someone's shooting, right, if Hold someone's on. shooting back at the police, it's not an execution. Wait. That's simple. Wait. You don't know when the state... was shooting back at the police. Are you familiar with the term like judge during execution? Do you know what an executioner actually is? 
An executioner yes. is a state appointed person who kills somebody else. That can be a police person. Now, listen, if you want to pick a different word, if you're, you're getting really hung up on the term execution here, but let's say if you're, let, let's just turn this around on you just real quick and see if you're going to be consistent with this. Because if, if you don't want to call um, the killing of Michael, Michael Reinell an execution, all right, fine. If you want to not call it that, but then can you at least admit that you are absolutely wrong? In If, if I am wrong in calling the state a, a group of police officers killing someone with state power and execution, then you are absolutely wrong about trying about calling the killing uh, and, and a killing where we do not have evidence of what actually happened in execution and that you were jumping the gun. And once again, just like you do with Antifa, accusing things without evidence. Can you okay, not admit I'm that? Here's what I'll make. If your argument Come is- Come on, that's going to that's gonna mean you are pretty dishonest. Am I giving- are you, Respond, are, let him respond. So you really don't want my answer? Is that what it is? Go Can for it. Okay. Uh, it, but my articulation would be, if your claim is, well, until we have all of the facts that play out in the court of law, we shouldn't call someone an execution. That's fine. I'll accept your definition. The point I was trying to make is I'm not the one who hyperventilated about the term execution. That's what you did to me. And then proceeded to immediately use the term execution and admit, oh, but I don't have all the facts of what happened in this case. Wait, with because I was there are two different situations. Now to get back on track. Will you concede That's not that a hypocrisy. Antifa also didn't, the Antifa in Portland also didn't know all the situations of Danielson's murder when they cheered that they had killed a fascist? I mean, I don't, I don't, like, okay, so there's a number of things here. First of all, you've made this allegation that, and, and again, I will point to the fact that whenever you talk about Antifa, you are very broad with your statements. You say, oh, Antifa was was celebrating. Do you Are you trying to say that every person who identifies with Antifa in Portland, which is probably quite a lot of people, was celebrating the death of, 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 uh, of, um, of the person who was executed? Like, I mean, I, I think, think that- the ones that were on the street okay. were, yeah. So, so you're saying that the people who, what, like there was people standing by and those, there were people who saw it and who were like, oh good, I don't know. Like what you're saying is some random allegation of random people, you know, like, like it doesn't really reflect on Antifa to me because, uh, I don't know. I know a lot of people in this area, for example, and sure, this is anecdote as much an anecdote as you saying that you saw people celebrating is, um, but there's tons of people who don't celebrate any of that shit. And they're absolutely people who consider themselves anti-fascists. Like, I think that you're, what you're doing is you saw some people who I would agree. I, I literally was on a panel like a, like a week and a half ago where I argued that celebrating the death of this guy was a complete mistake. You can actually see the VOD. It actually caused quite a bit of drama. I was involved in for telling somebody that I don't think that they should excel, cel, celebrate that. And I imagine this person probably identifies an anti-fascist, but unlike you, I'm able to dif d distinguish the difference between someone who calls themselves an anti-fascist who I might disagree with or that person being bad and all anti-fascists being bad. And even though you 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 made the argument at one point that it's somehow different from Christianity, I would I would see it I see it as no different. You're you're saying someone with a set of political beliefs that all all of these people are somehow bad because one person did something. And it I'm just it isn't borne out in reality. Religion. You're making up a conspiracy. That, that's not true. I could go but to you the, are. For example, but you we'll go to are. Rose City Antifa. For example, we'll go to the Rose City Antifa group that's okay. in Portland. Right? Sure, let's talk about website? Rose City. Okay, they talk about uh, Black Box is a tactic that they embrace that where they have to stay anonymous. You can go to this site, crimethink.com, and check it out. You go to sure. Crimethink, and it talks about the importance of Black Box, using physical violence against police and other fascists in order to achieve political goals. That's part of what Black Box is, learning tactics on how to arm you yourself, how to keep your face concealed, to use tactics to swarm people, to use tactics to make sure that you can't be arrested, to use tactics to make sure you can engage in violence and intimidation. Now, this is embraced by Rose City Antifa, which is the Antifa group in Portland. Now, it is not the, the, no, no, see, you, you've done it again. You've done it again. You're okay, doing, you, you, you do this. No, no, hold, hold on Portland? a second. Hold on a second. There's a number of Antifa groups in Portland. Are you kidding me? Right. Antifa is, in right. fact, in fact, just so you know, um, the government, <laughs> It's it's quite wild because the, the Trump government, Trump who regularly talks about uh, and, and motions towards Antifa as this sort of boogeyman very frequently, his own government has come to the conclusion that there are very few centrally, even centrally organized Antifa groups. And the ones that exist are very small and tend to do things um, that have nothing to do with political violence. So you're talking about Rose City Antifa and you assert that it's the only Antifa group in, in Portland, which is patently not true. Not only do I know a number of people who are- That's, uh, yeah. Fair enough. Uh, could you, so since you know more about uh, Antifa in Portland, can you show me an example of an Antifa group in Portland that expressed condemns violence wait what why would i you why would it matter you 
apparently you have a, a, a you have a great amount of knowledge of no, no, hold on a second Portland. like can wait wait but that their statement that but, they condemn violence hold on a second but you're asking me to you're asking me to prove something that you alleged you were the one who alleged that antifa no, was you the just only, said it is you on know to you a bunch of other groups you just said you know a bunch of other antifa groups in portland yeah, i actually do know another people. antifa so, i knew do know another antifa group sure. it's called portland yes, mutual sure. aid portland mutual aid does not engage in any sort of black bo block or violent protest portland mutual so aid is an ah, oh you wait you got it. you asked me a question now you got to let me talk I know because you opened a can of worms. As it turns out, I know a lot of Antifa organizations. In fact, you know what? I even brought one up at the beginning if you'd been listening at all. One of the most famous anti-fascist groups in the entire history of the world. Um, which, again, I will cite, Albert Einstein was a member of. So I guess you want to call him him a terrorist in retrospect as well. But this uh, this this group, so um, the, the so Jewish anti-fascist. They did not one. call the group that Albert Einstein but, but again, did wait a minute. themselves Antifa. Wait. Wait, they did yeah, not. wait, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, hold on a second. Yes, they did. Antifa, no, they did. wait a second. Antifa is a contraction, my dude. That's like being like, that's like being like, oh, the Seattle police didn't call themselves SPD because you make a contraction. Antifa is short for anti-fascist. People say that as a short thing. You you think that just because you shortened the name that all of a sudden you can pretend that they're like something else? These groups call themselves, all these groups, all anti-fascists call themselves anti-fascists. All they wear the same symbols definition. of the original anti-fascista group with the two flags. Wait, so do all types of things. Wait a, wait a minute, wait a minute. That's no different than Christianity. That's okay. no different. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Uh, we can in the debate if you want. Go ahead, say something. Wait, wait, but wait a minute, wait, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. Okay, go ahead and say something. Are you are you okay? Wait, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Now, can you just let me finish my point? Would that be all right? Um, you admitted that the original Antifa, anti-fascista group in Germany embraced using violence to achieve their goals. Why is it that the groups that colloquially identify themselves as Antifa wear the exact same symbolism, embrace the exact same violent topics or violent tactics? Just because a group had anti-fascist committee in their name doesn't mean that they identified as Antifa. And this is a trick that we see Wait, oftentimes employed. That's not, if that you means may, not. It would be like if the KKK changed their name to the We Love Puppies group, you couldn't say, well, you can't say the KKK is a violent group because other people that love puppies all weren't violent. What Albert Einstein and that group that was against the Nazis had to do with had nothing to do whatsoever with the people that identify as the organization Antifa today. And it would be, again, you say it's like Christianity. No, I say it's more like Nazi, where there isn't a group that's just the single Nazi group. There are skinheads. There are people that call themselves all sorts of organizations that agreed with the original Nazi tenets. But I would be able to say that everyone in those groups are disgusting and that the vast majority of them are terrorist groups because they use violence and intimidation against civilians to achieve political ends. For example, I wouldn't have been looking at Richard Spencer's group saying, well, now, wait a minute. Not everyone in Richard Spencer's group wanted Heather Heyer to die. So it's unfair to look at Richard Spencer's group and say that they're bad. And finally, uh, since you know the other organizations that identify as Antifa in Portland that denounce violence, I'll be happy for you to show me the source that shows that they're denouncing violence. Oh yeah, absolutely. I can, I can, I can find you that. I don't have it on hand because I wasn't expecting you to try and um, like get like a cheap gotcha when you made a, a completely spurious claim. And you have it. even in this sentence, you made spurious claims about Antifa. First of all, your your like strange distinction that oh well they didn't use the term Antifa back then means that they weren't that they weren't anti-fascist antifa is short for anti-fascist my dude it's just it's literally a colloquialism there's no difference there's no group that just only calls themselves antifa antifa is just shorthand there's no like you're you, you've you've made a distinction without a difference there's there's no difference between anti antifa and anti-fascism besides what's like like perhaps some people who allege mass cons conspiracies that there's some difference these groups now a another thing that you brought up you brought up this thing about symbology there are groups that use all kinds of symbology and while that can be useful sometimes it doesn't necessarily guarantee anything and also i don't think i'm gonna call your bluff here i don't think you have the evidence to prove um what groups use what symbology and which ones don't you just don't okay, so, if, so if can, one group uses city antifa's group that uses the flag sure. okay that's uh, that's so, great but that's that means we're talking about rose city antifa we're not talking okay. about antifa and keep in mind that you came here you came to this discussion to have the discussion whether antifa is a terrorist organization and it is definitively not and your argument so sure. far has been completely centered on one specific type of anti-fascist 
and and that sure it is. And, and oh, you, let me ask it's you like this. wait, 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 hold on, because I want to explain this because you 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 got to do your whole rant. And, and you alleged a lot of things like you have done in most of your rants here, where you allege a lot of things without evidence. So another, this, this is like, when you, when you point to the symbology, I can't believe that you would then go from right there to ignoring the, the direct comparison to something like Christianity. All Christians use the cross. All Christians, with very few exceptions, use the cross, but that doesn't mean they all believe in the same thing. They have very different beliefs. Anybody who has a, a, um, you know, a, 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 a sort of, uh, nuanced understanding of how organizations and belief systems work would never, it would never make such broad accusations as to say all of Christianity or all of Antifa is X. And yet you've done that again and again and again in this conversation, you've accused them of being a terrorist organization, which again, I will point to you, the repercussions for somebody being labeled a terrorist can be as far as millions of deaths. America what are just the repercussions for labeling someone a fascist. Oh, I mean, I don't know. There could be there could be all kinds of repercussions. We can have that, but that's, but, you that's a different, but that's a different conversation. That's a totally different conversation. Oh, okay, so so just so we could get you off the moral high horse of don't label people so because you're quite readily calling people fascists and you know that they could be murdered for that. So okay, so now that we're off I that mean, moral did high I, horse, did I, and the argument did is, did I say anybody was to, like like you like, said Donald Trump has fascist tendencies? This but also, fascist, but also, you just but, 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 you fascist. Oh, hold yes. on a second. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. I I I. I I just want to make a, a quick distinction here, which is that, first of all, um, you would have to substantiate the idea that um, calling someone a fascist has the same impact as calling someone a terrorist. And I don't think you can do that. Um, if you can, I'd be interested to, to sort of hash that out. But it is a I will note it is a different conversation that we're having, but I'm more than happy to discuss it with you. However, it is very different. Calling someone a fascist is not the same as calling someone a terrorist, as we know. And, and I came to this discussion prepared with the knowledge that, hey, um, if you call somebody a terrorist, we've justified war over calling somebody a terrorist. Right, we, we have never war over fascists. No, we've we... never justified war over fascism? That's your argument? I mean, uh, that's a stretch to say that why we got involved. <laughs> with... Wait a minute, hold on a second. The idea that the idea that we got involved in World War II because they were fascist, that is not real that's not reality. That's not what happened. There was a absolute confluence of political forces that got us to involve. I mean, you could say, I mean, it would be to the case of, by the way, it would be to the case of Antifa if you were to make the argument that we got involved um in World War II because of fascism. Because by its definition, and Listen, I would argue this, this too. Oh, wait, 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 wait. You, you gotta example. let me finish, man. You gotta let me finish. I, mean, I feel like you You're you, you're getting really mad, but you gotta let me finish. I'm not mad. It's just that it's it's a point that's like we literally are talking about someone who was just murdered and then people celebrated because it was the death of a fascist. Wait, but but, literally people, just but wait a minute, but hold on a second. But I literally just told you that I literally personally had an argument with somebody who was who was uh I believe unduly celebrating that death. I don't believe in this. So don't assi ascribe well, me. Did. Wait, wait, wait. But don't ascribe me positions. And also, I would ask that again. That's you just, not what I'm doing. Wait, That's you did. Your wait, you, You're wait, saying wait. I can't call someone a terrorist because other people might go out and do them harm. I no. say you call people fascist and other people might go out and do them harm. You say don't ascribe to me that. Wait well, a second. Wait a second. Me, Hold on a second. If you can call someone a fascist with the understanding you, that that you, could you, be you the haven't listened to anything I've said for the last time. I already addressed this. Nor, Rob, Rob, Rob. You cut out? Rob, can I hear you? Can you say something, Rob? Am I still here? I think uh, his Discord crashed. I think your Discord might have crashed. Me? Uh, now I can hear you. Okay, there it is. Sorry, uh, you just cut yeah, out yeah. for a second. There you go. Okay, yeah. good. Um. Okay, so um. there's a couple of things here. Again, you didn't listen to what I said literally just before you started talking about that. If you want to say that labeling somebody a fascist, and I, by the way, um, I would agree with you in saying that we should be careful about labeling people fascist. I don't just label people fascist at random. Um, I, in fact, I, I literally advocate that people be very, very careful about such a thing. You, however, walked into this discussion perfectly willing to claim that Antifa is a terrorist organization without without any considerations. I mean, you can say that it is, but you haven't provided that evidence. And I have, sure, and I in this, wait, 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 in the course of this discussion, I have brought up unequivocal examples of when the title of terrorist has been explicitly used, not even secondarily, but explicitly used to harm people, to kill many people, sometimes 
in fact, many of those people who had nothing to do with the terrorist act themselves. Keep in mind, under the guise of fighting terrorism, we went to war with Iraq. We killed civilians over this that. This is a worthless point. It uh, is not a worthless point. It is absolutely yeah, essential. Yeah, How yeah, dare yeah, you? Like, you want to talk about, wait a minute, hold on a second. Wait, you interrupted me. Wait, 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 okay, you're about to be muted, you're about to be muted. Okay, 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 okay. Uh, maybe I didn't clarify this at the beginning. If I start talking, everybody shuts down. I've had you both on enough heavy to be podcasts. I didn't think I need to mention that, but I will mention that down. I stopped. Talking, Have the record hold. I stopped. Because, uh, nothing of, uh, nothing of value is happening. So, uh, Dean Mama, you said something. He responded and he said something that I know outraged you, but he didn't get to finish his statement as to why. So I would like to hear him finish his okay. statement as to why before outrage is, is done. I mean, that's not fair, but all right. Right. So we can say all the time that groups are hate groups or terrorist groups, even if that doesn't mean that every single person that was in that group would have been a, ter a terrorist or a hate filled person. For example, I could with unabashedly say that the KKK is a hateful and was a terrorist group that used violence and intimidation. I could say that. I wouldn't say, now, wait a minute. We shouldn't say the KKK is that because if we say that they're a terrorist group, then bad things could happen to members of the KKK and that would be bad. That This is an absurd point. It's just trying to deflect from the point. Now, to get back on the topic, like, so I provided evidence, for example, of Rose City Antifa. The Watch board. this. Let Watch me just this. say this. The best that you'll be able to get in this debate is other groups that have said the word anti-fascist in their name might not necessarily be terrorist groups. But then we could say all the groups that we see engaged in Black Bloc that are out there, and those are the groups of prominence that are doing all these riots. all of those individual groups are terrorist groups. So at the end of the day, you might be able to make an argument that, well, there could be other groups that call themselves Antifa that just aren't in the political sphere right now or in the civil sphere that don't engage in this violence. Black Bloc, which most of these Antifa groups admit that they engage in, it says right on the website that they link to that it's a group that prescribes, it's a tactic that prescribes using violence to achieve political changes. We can see other groups like the Puget Sound John Brown, Brown Club or John Brown Gun Club, who had a member named, um, let me get his name here, uh, Wilhelm Von Spronson, who in 2019 attacked an ICE facility, firebombed it, had long arms, was going to free people that were in this facility. Uh, if you go to the John Brown Gun Club for July 13, 2020, they released a statement marking how he's a hero. He was widely celebrated in Antifa circles. I could point to you literature that was put out by Antifa groups that is saying, this is how you riot properly. This is how you do these things properly. At the beginning of these George Floyd riots that was released by Atlanta's Antifa site. I could point to you Rose City Antifa, Atlanta Antifa, New York City Antifa, and other organizations tweeting before they made their Twitter private, uh, giving out tactics and how to do these riots properly and doing other things like saying where police were to avoid people getting arrested by police. Now, all of this stuff's occurring and what we now see is up to $2 billion of damage, incredible violence and intimidation, even to the point where we've had Black Lives Matter people asking these Antifa people to stop burning down inner city black neighborhoods. And the deflection is going to be, well, we shouldn't call them terrorists, although they're using violence and intimidation to achieve political ends, because it might result in someone uh, being attacked by the U.S. government. Okay, so again, you have alleged an incredible amount here. And I also just I just want to bring attention to one thing and and maybe, you know, maybe I'm, I'm out of line here. The audience can um, can kind of decide on this one. But I think it's really dishonest to try and compare Antifa to the KKK. Like, my dude, do you realize what type of a comparison, like what how insensitive of a comparison that is? Like like the KKK as an organization, which is a centralized organization, mind you, it is a documented centralized organization. It has an internal structure um, and internal leadership. It is a centralized, well-documented organization that has committed an unfathomable, like an uncountable amount of murders through the history of the United States. The fact that the fact that you would compare Antifa, even if I was, even if we were to accept, which I do not, but even if I were to accept that Antifa is some kind of violent, like universally violent group, to compare them to the KKK just proves you don't take this ser this conversation as seriously as you should. The KKK I'm is one of the most heinous organizations in the history of the world. They lynched people for fuck's sake. Are you so for Antifa, real with this? Like, are you gonna wait, wait, wait? I just wait. You can't. You keep in interrupting me every time you went on for like 10 minutes and then now you say I'm going on but it's like it's my turn like I mean I can't believe you would make such a comparison and to me that seems like again another example of how willing you are to to label somebody who you politically agree with um with totally 
totally hyperbolic language, which could justify all kinds of terrible things. Again, in the course of this conversation, you have yet to to, to um, indicate any sort of um, of, of downside um, that would be even close to coming to something like labeling someone a terrorist. We went to multiple wars over people that we were labeled terrorists. People, many, many millions of people have died over the war on terror. And you're going to try and equate that to Antifa, no matter how bad you think you think Antifa is. And I guarantee you that as bad as you think it is, I don't think that you have the facts to back that up. But even if you did, it would be absurd to compare that to the amount of deaths that have been re have been dished out upon the world in the name of of fighting terrorism and the amount of deaths that have been dished out by the KKK. And the fact that you would do that is should be offensive to everyone listening to this conversation. That's a, that's wild. That's so dishonest. Uh, I, now, okay, I so, 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 so wait, before, before, before we go on, I, I just wanted to clarify. I think from now on, I'm going to get a chest timer for my screen, which I'm going to use to time people and see how long they're going. Uh, just, just, just as a historical record. Not, not to necessarily say, well, you only get this amount of time, but just a historical record for the future, so, uh, so I can get not so much shit from chat. But um, other than that, I just wanted to pose it to you since it was pretty probed. Uh, Rob, do you think it's a fair comparison? Uh, I would think that it's hilarious to hear someone make this sort of uh, articulate how offended yeah, they totally are by this after, in defense of a group that likens Trump to Hitler. The entire group of Antifa is likening groups to the fascist Nazis. I'm, I'm, this, I'm genuinely this floored. Is this is unbelievable. The virtue signaling is strong, though. I'll wait. give you that. How, now, how is that? Wait, wait, no, 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 no. How dare you liken them to the KKK? These Nazi support Trump supporters, the fascist Trump supporters, the fan. I mean, they have American flags that complain about the teachers' unions. You know, but the, you can't call you you can't liken the KKK to Antifa, but certainly you could liken Trump and his supporters to the Nazis and Hitler. Wait, I mean, wait come a on, this is wait a minute. It's, excuse it's me, it's, excuse me, please, and, please don't uh, lie. Uh, listen, listen. Uh, it's fine. Uh, it's fine. It's I would like to, I would like to hear him finish. I'd like to hear. Yeah, I'll keep going. Thank you. He finished. Um, so I just think it's funny that so many people in Antifa do that. Uh, they liken. They want to say that I never oh, said you're that. Yeah, I know. Unions, you're a fascist, but then at the same time. I wasn't saying that Antifa is exactly like the KKK. I said that if the KKK murdered someone, I wouldn't say, well, there are people in the KKK that don't. The, uh, the argument that I used earlier was the label Nazi. Nazi, there isn't just a Nazi group now. There are groups that call themselves neo-Nazis. There are specific groups, subgroups that identify with an ideology of Nazism. Some of those groups may not advocate violence. For example, you had people like David Duke of the KKK that at one point was probably just for show because he's disgusting, but he was condemning violence. You see, Richard Spencer says, no, 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 we don't want to use violence. I don't then say, oh, well, then I don't want to label their group as using violence and intimidation because some of them have came out and said, well, we don't specifically endorse violence. Now, again, I've given specific examples and we can see how the black, uh, that you still haven't answered the question. Do you think that any Antifa organization that uses black bloc is in fact using violence and therefore we could say they were using violence against civilian populations for political change? I mean, okay. this is- this So is I a... now I now have a chest a clock open in another tab. So I'll be able to keep record of this just for chat. Okay, sure, wonderful. Yeah, hey, Mama, you can start. Um, yeah, uh, again, like, um... God, like, I don't even know where to begin with this. Like, again, I, you, I'll note that you didn't answer Dylan's question about whether uh, you think it's a fair comparison to compare the KKK to Antifa, which is, an, is by the way, an, a, a patently absurd comparison. Absolutely absurd. Um, not only is there no evidence that um, the amount of violence that any any Antifa group, any associated Antifa group, is, comes even close to the amount of horror the KKK has, has, has wreaked out upon this country. But, the, but the, the idea that you would even compare two groups, one which is a group that specifically specifically and explicitly screams out about white supremacy it's just it is unbelievably out of touch let's just put it that way and 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 secondly um the idea that uh like i i think that you're you're engaging very dishonestly when discussing black block um like and again i think that this is um a, another attempt at fear mongering and making and making it seem okay for you to label a group like terrorism black block is like is is like not even like it's not what you, it's not even what you what you're saying that it means. Black block has nothing to do with violence. Black block has to do with identification. Now, are there black block people who engage in violence? 
Sure, there are also many, many who do not. Black block is a is a is a tactic that people use to prevent themselves from being identified by the state. And keep in mind that black block has been used in places where I bet you would agree with them. For example, the Hong Kong protests used black block because China was re was using surveillance to identify protesters and and persecute them afterwards. So black block is not what you what you are trying to make it out to be. It's not like some secret tactic that's gone into to allow violence. It's to for people to be able to protect their identity from a state who might oppose them, which is completely rational when you have a state that has been willing and openly and publicly, a matter of public record, mind you, um, engage in black in black bagging of protesters, for example. Okay, so uh, given that, oh, sorry, do I got the wrong thing up here? Uh, yeah, I, I see my I see my beautiful face. How do I fix this? Mm. One second. So I was trying uh, to show. Okay. Can you give me the source? Then I'll figure out how to stop that sharing. Uh, can you give me then your source of your definition of what black block is? Because I have it straight from uh, an actual website that was designed, that was linked by Rose City Antifa to describe exactly Wait, what black but, block is. But, okay, but you do realize that like you're not countering anything. There is black block is something that has existed for a very long time. It's existed for like, uh, right. Six years. So gear to bring, defensive gear. Wait 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 wait, shields, wait, 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 wait. You asked me a question. Now you're just plowing over me. That's not very okay, so honest. That's what I asked. Can you yeah. have the source? Wait, there's a there's a number of sources. Yeah, like I mean, I don't have any what? single source that I'll pull off of. There's literally been the documentation of protests going back to the civil rights movements. You can see black black block black. That's like saying like that's like saying, do you have a, a source for what a bird is? It's like yeah, there are a lot of things that have, that that you could point to for that. I don't have anything on hand that that states like. I will be completely okay, honest. Like, I didn't expect Wait, 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 that but that's not the answer point. because hold on a second. Because you're trying to use a single group's definition, which is not fair. That would be like saying, that would be like me picking um, like the Branch Davidians, uh, a sec a shoot offshoot of Christianity and using their definition of religion, uh, their definition of Christianity to define all of Christianity. You're just, you're being dishonest. Listen, no, because, listen, because hold on, wait. Here's what you could do. Here's what you could do situation you could provide me evidence of something that was de defining that in a different way to show that they didn't endorse violence so it's real simple if you're correct you could provide me evidence that black block a better source that says black block doesn't recommend things like spray paint projectiles slingshots signs flags and fixed poles molotov cocktails bright lights to obscure camera vision during night actions ladders bolt cutters communications equipment banners shields steel toed shoes armor padding gas masks goggles bandanas soaked in lime Etc. Yeah, so actually, I would. I can actually. It, you know what? It. It. You're. You're right. Um. If you want specific things, I can point you to a. A. To exactly what I said, which is that there are so many sources that the idea that I would need to point to a single source about a about something that has been used across dozens upon dozens. I mean, literally hundreds of of protests worldwide have used black block. Literally, please just just do me a favor, Rob, and go to the black block entry on Wikipedia and scroll down and see just how many. Any books, articles, websites, or site site are cited in order to get an idea of what black block has been historically. Black block is not is not just one single thing. You can't just go to Rose City Antifa's website, a group that you really seem fixated on, and just be like, oh, that is what all black block is. That is not only like that's that's historically ridiculous. That's like me saying that like that like because because again, because like the Branch Davidians or something, or because um some extreme Christian sect uses the Bible as a justification that all people who touch the Bible are somehow wrong. That's a totally backwards way of reasoning. That's not how reasoning works. You can't just say, oh, well, Rose City Antifa, who I don't know, from what I've heard of Rose City Antifa, they seem like they're pretty hardcore. Um, I don't know, like their definition might be very different and is very different from many other people who've participated in, believed in, and, and theorized on Black Bloc. Your view of Black Bloc is, is a fantasy that's not based on reality. Just look at this. There are literally there are literally over a, there is almost a hundred yeah, i want to i want to bring it back to rob you've you've had a decent amount of time to talk okay sure Good? yeah uh, so again the, yeah, the Antifa really groups that are using this black block we can see that in almost every single example they're using the laser lights they come with shields they come with umbrellas they use violence and intimidation molotov cocktails they're throwing things that that uh the rose city antifa the black block that they're referencing talks about how you can take things like hammers that you're able to then break up concrete and throw it we can see that this is used, I could go example after example of the Antifa groups that we see out and about that feel that they are justified in their fight against fascism, which they call the U.S. government fascists. They're justified in using violence. This is terrorism. 
They're using violence and intimidation to go after civilian populations to achieve political goals. So much to the point that we've actually had evidence of Black Lives Matter asking them to leave certain areas because they were trying to peacefully protest, but Antifa showed up and wanted to create violence. We see this occur over and over again. Now, as we see earlier, we can see that uh, I know that people are complaining and saying, oh, so then Rob must be defending fascism. No, this is a common tactic that we see in the left. If you call yourself an anti-fascist, then that must mean you're the good guy. But they behave in the most fascist type tactics. We can see from back in 2017 where they were hitting people with bike locks, stopping people from being able to see conservative speakers, uh, mobbing people, constantly making sure that conservatives couldn't uh, engage in peaceful rallies and things like that. We can see even in this conversation, we've had talk of the person who had firebombed an ICE facility and then was celebrated by the John Brown Gun Club and other Antifa organizations. We can see that admittedly by Demon Mama, that the person, Jay Danielson, the Aaron Jay Danielson, that was murdered, executed, whatever you want to call it, by a self-proclaimed Antifa member that we saw then other Antifa people celebrate that. And again, there. what this will sneaky. come down to is the last ditch hope that we see from people on the left that say, but there could be a person out there that doesn't believe in this violence. Well, it doesn't matter because what we can see is the Antifa people that actually do matter, the ones that are a terrorist organization, no, are I'm the ones that Dylan. are out there lighting fires. And we've had now over $2 billion of damage that have occurred in these riots. Over 40 people have died. Same we see in point, the Chaz same, zone same that was led primarily by Antifa, for example, that the security in Chaz executed a 16-year-old African-American kid. And we actually have the audio of it where they shot at them. And then when they said, hey, they're still breathing, and then put three more bullets in the kid's head. Now, I don't know if that was specifically a member of Antifa, but it was done in an Antifa zone, and Antifa would not allow law enforcement in to be able to investigate that crime. See, we also have a letter from the Department of Homeland Security uh, that just came out this week that was leaked that said that they now know that actually there's plenty of evidence that it's not Antifa being disparate, that they're actually organized in places like Portland. They're being financed, and they're using tactics that suggest that they're heavily organized. These tactics are clearly used to use violence and intimidation against the general populace, which proves that once no, more, hasn't. these are terrorists. And he never will. Okay, so again, um, I, I just, it's just, there's so much. You always make so many allegations. Everything from this thing that's like, CHOP is a CHOP is an Antifa zone, which is just not even accurate. I literally live in Seattle. That's not even accurate to the fact of like, it's like, that's so inaccurate. It's, it's like, it's almost hilarious as somebody who lives here. Like, like, that's just ab absurd. Like that's such an absurd statement. Do you know how many? Do you know that? Do you even know what 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 chop where chop was located? Can you tell me where it was located? Seattle. Yeah, Seattle. Where Capitol in Seattle? Hill. Capitol Hill. Capitol do you Hill? know what cap? Do you know what Capitol Hill is? I would assume that it's six city blocks in the city of Seattle. Yeah, it's a residential neighborhood. There are a lot of people okay. who lived within that area. The idea that CHOP was was like some Antifa zone is ridiculous. There were so many people involved in CHOP, so many different factions that were involved in CHOP that when the police pulled out, it was there was people trying to figure out as best as they could the way to take care of the massive amount of homeless people that have been pushed out of their house in this area. So you're, again, just like almost every single thing that's been happening in this conversation, you're trying to boil everything down to an incredibly simple black and white, oh, Antifa is some kind of terrorist group. And you motion to all of these individual things, which I don't even know. You could be making them up off the spot. We don't even know what examples you're talking about. And none of those, none of those even come to the argument that it would be fair to label Antifa a terrorist organization. Just out of curiosity, are you aware what um, the widely available statistics on, on terror in the United States have to say about um, anti-fascist uh, violence? Are you aware that the government doesn't even list Antifa um, on, the, on, the, on the fucking top... 25 groups that are a danger as of terrorism in the United States? Are you aware that the number one group of, 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 dangerous, ex, uh, of dangerous terrorists in this country, literally higher than Al-Qaeda, is white supremacist extremists? That this was recently discussed? The FBI's whoa, own whoa, data. Whoa, 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 Wait, real quick. You have mean? to be careful calling white supremacists terrorists. Don't you know that Wait, the wait a second. Wait. really bad? Don't Hold you know on? that? How could I mean, you say they're all terrorists? You're trying right now, but but what you're doing is you're not actually listening to the words that I'm saying, which I understand is like is fine if you want to just constantly continue in whatever worldview you have. But what I'm talking about is government designations. The government is currently run by by Donald Trump. The 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 FBI is not like some left wing organization. They don't even list. They don't even even the FBI won't label Antifa as a terrorist group. 
I'm sorry, but you're just making that up. And in fact, even let's, let's say this, let's say that we go with your very dishonest framing. I'll even grant you that we can, we'll make the, the very, very unethical assumption that, um, the conflict between, um, between uh, the two people in Portland, I keep forgetting their names, but the conflict between those two people in, For in Portland, let's count that as, we can even count that as an Antifa killing if you want to. I don't think that's fair. I think that's totally unbelievable, but I'll grant it to you. Do you know how many, um, do you know how many murders that would make for Antifa? By the way, this data is pulled from the federal government itself. What, how many murders that would make for Antifa in the last 25 years? Do you know? If you'd like me to respond, I can start responding. Well, I mean, I'm asking you a question and I stopped talking, yes. Uh, I don't know exactly what the federal government will say, but I have plenty to say on this issue. That would make one. That would make one. And this is from the federal government. This is from an organization that is willing to label people terrorists. And I am very reluctant to label people terrorists because I know what happens to people when they're labeled terrorists. When, when somebody is labeled a terrorist, our government has proven that in the past, certain actors in our government are 100... Wait but you, you seeded it back to me, are willing to, uh, are absolutely willing to engage in, in abject violence. The Iraq war was predicated on that. One sec. Okay. Just saying. Aaron, Aaron Danielson, thank you. Sorry, I forget their names. Okay, sorry about that work stuff. Uh, first off, uh, the idea that it's funny you bring this up in this area, uh, the FBI. So I love that the left does this. On one hand, if I would to cite the FBI statistics that showed, for example, uh, murder rates by age, population, gender, things like that, then we would say, oh, we can't trust the FBI. The police are corrupt. But when it comes to the FBI and talking about Antifa or talking about white ring violence, all of a sudden they're the end all be all and we have to talk about it. Yes, I'm aware of those statistics. The argument I, I also know that the way the FBI categorizes this, they say that anytime a white racial group kills someone of a different race, they consider that right wing terrorism. That's what they say, right? But they I mean, don't wouldn't do the that be? Person. Isn't that right wing terrorism? If a if a if a white what racial group... to the person that was reticent to label things terrorists. Wait, wait now a minute. All of a sudden, now all of a sudden, now all of a sudden, you're I'm asking you. By, wait, 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 wait oh. a second. I'm asking you by your definition. It wouldn't it wouldn't it be. Um, wouldn't it, by your definition, be terrorism if a white nationalist group killed a black person? That's your so definition I'm asking you. That was, okay, sure. I would say that's terrorism. I, but then can you explain to me why... Okay, the but then where's your FBI, argument? If, wait, you were trying... Wait, 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 wait. If you let me finish, if you, wait, 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 wait. if you let me finish, I'll tell you. Can you explain to me then why the same FBI doesn't equivalent when a black nationalist group or a black group kills a white person that that's not considered... Can I, can I... Can I make can I make my job really easier quick? Because I keep trying to DM people directly and message people directly, but my job's getting really hard. Okay, so here's two rules in chat. Okay, do not ask advocate for any violence against any individual in chat. If you do so, from this point on, you will be banned. And this is my rule. If you don't like it, too bad. I don't think it's productive for dialogue. If you misgender somebody going forward, you will get a warning and then a ban. If it's unclear that you didn't know, then that's what the warning's in place for. That's the policy going forward. If you don't like that, that's a problem. Don't care. I, I, I've already addressed it enough times in my chat before. Uh, I know there's specific, if you want to talk to me about the policy afterwards, uh, you can DM me on Discord. We can talk about it in private. Okay. Do make continue. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, no problem. That was That's important. Um, yeah, so the same FBI doesn't consider, for example, it will consider prison gangs. So if you have a white prison gang that kills a black person, I would consider that probably, that would fall in my definition of terrorism. Most likely there could be, I could see the argument either way, but for the sake of this, I'd say yes. Why isn't it then when a black prison gang member kills a white person that that's not considered black terrorism? Well, actually, it's funny that you bring that up because um, when, when when if we're talking about pure um the, the, the statistics that we're pulling off, um, that the black supremac supremacist extremists are actually listed um, in the moderate category of risk. So the, the idea that they don't um, is, is silly. They do. That is absolutely measured. It just, as it turns out, doesn't happen as frequently. Um, that, that's not true. For example, we can but, see then, but, and then, then but, again, but, it comes but, no, but then you're, but you're arguing with, I mean, I can get, literally uh, give you the me, Can you look at the time and see uh, who said what well, You asked me something and then uh, I responded. Well, I, 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 I'll, I'll, I'll report on that. Uh, Demon Mama has had about three more minutes of time overall. Thank you. Um, so, yeah. So if you look, it's 
not just if, if we look at the FBI statistics, for example, we can see that there are far more uh, murders and violent crimes that occur from the black community, the white community. It's just that the FBI chooses not to label them terrorism as often. Uh, and we can see clear examples of things that most stably look like hate crimes, like the black gentleman that was beating someone at Macy's because he alleged the N-word was said. That's oftentimes dropped or not considered a hate crime. We also see the FBI, it's a whole conversation that I think we'll be having tomorrow. Uh, the FBI was engaged in a coup against Donald Trump. So I really don't take the word of Christopher Ray that much. But if you do want to take the word of Christopher Ray, we could see what he said yesterday. Now, notice that you only talk about deaths, but you're not talking about damage. Can you show me the KKK or other groups in the recent past that were burning down cities? We can see now that the estimate of the damage that's occurred through these riots is $2 billion. And we've had over 40 deaths that have occurred as a result of these riots. That's just been in the past couple months. Uh, we can see Christopher Ray says uh, that... Uh, so I want to be clear by describing it as an ideology movement. I don't mean to minimize the seriousness of the violences of the criminality that's going on across the country, talking about Antifa, some of which is attributable to people by, inspired by, or self-identify with that ideology movement. We focus on that. So and all throughout this speech that he gave the other day, although he was, to your point, in, in fairness, unwilling to call them a group, which clearly we can see there are subsects of the groups, he did admit that there were subsects of groups that are engaged in terroristic behavior that identify as Antifa. So the idea then that we're going to say, well, that's not the case, uh, that you know somehow it's other groups. Again, we have a letter from the Department of Homeland Security, uh, which I'll just read real briefly and then see back my time, which says that um, the individuals are violently attacking yes, federal facilities will. based on the ideology of Antifa. Violent Antifa anarchist inspired. We can't say any longer that this situation is opportunistic. Additionally, we have overwhelming intelligence record regarding the ideology driving individuals towards violence and why the violence has continued. A core set of the threat actors are organized, show up night after night, share common tactics and drawing on like-minded individuals and their cause. I recognize we might not be able to attribute every individual's VIAA. However, we need to look at the totality of intelligence, both current and previous, to recognize the motivation for violence and why people have shown up to commit this violence and why the individual are using social media to encourage the Antifa on the ground to carry out acts of violence. Did I lose you? Um, I mean, I lost myself for a little bit there. Um, did I hear you correctly in saying that you believe that the FBI staged a coup against Donald Trump? Yes. Okay. All right. I we know that's know not, I know that's not the topic at hand, but, um, last I, I will, last I, I will be hosting a conversation about that yeah. with Rob. That isn't actually tomorrow. That has been pushed back because someone had to cancel. Uh, we're trying to see if that can be next week. Is, I, uh, I just, next uh, week I will be fine, but I'm okay. busy the rest Got of this week. Tomorrow night. Got it. No problem. Yeah. Um, yeah. I just, I just feel like, again, this is another example of incredibly hyperbolic language to the point of, um, of, 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 almost like I would almost say like uh, unethicality in claiming that Donald Trump, a president who still holds an incredible amount of power um, was cooed. Likewise, I would say that your allegations based on incredibly spurious data that Antifa is a terrorist organization when the absolute best that you could bring to the table was, uh, was Chris Ray saying, well, we need to look into it a little bit more. Um, just to me, just, it just seems very, very characteristic of a very dishonest approach to this, to this, um, this topic. And again, um, while like we could talk about uh all kinds of 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 uh, of, of different um, measures by which we could measure terroristic activity, I suppose. But again, I will point to the fact that under our current definitions, labeling someone a terrorist is incredibly dangerous and should be done so with the utmost care, which you have shown none of in this conversation. You have been willing to accuse Antifa as a whole, which is, mind you, the name of a, of a set of beliefs, anti-fascism, as a terrorist organization. And no one, not even the sources you have cited, agree with you. The only people who have, in fact, in fact, it's really really funny because people like Donald Trump himself, um, let me just give you a very specific example that we can have one off. D Donald Trump accused a guy named Mar Martin Gugino. Maybe you might remember him. He was from a very famous video um, out of, I think it was Buffalo, New York, uh, a 70 year old man who was pushed down by the police. Donald Trump went on the national news and accused him of being an Antifa proc provocateur with literally no evidence. There was no evidence that he was anything to do, that he even had anti anti-fascist beliefs. Um, this guy was not Antifa and it later came out that he had been, that it, that had been completely fabricated off of nothing. Donald Trump just pulled that out of his ass and was willing to accuse a 70 year old man who had been wronged by the police. An old man was pushed down and, and cracked his skull and suffered 
a traumatic brain injury. And Donald Trump was willing to use his platform on the national news to label this guy an Antifa provocateur. That is the exactly emblematic of what I've been talking about in this entire conversation. This willingness to engage in unbelievable hyperbole. And, and, and not only that, but smearing groups together in the name of labeling them an enemy. An enemy that we have traditionally pursued with lethal force. The war on terror has devastated millions of lives both of Americans and beyond. So what the, why on earth would you ever be so willing to be so careless with such something like that? And would you not equally, why would you not denounce something like Donald Trump blatantly mislabeling an old man who was wronged, who was objectively wronged by the police as an Antifa provocateur? How can you stand in the face of this and say that it's like, it's not hyperbolic to, to make comparisons between Antifa to the KKK, for God's sake, and then also to not only do that but to try and un undermine you've asked them a lot of questions sure, there's sure. only so much one person can respond yeah, that's to. fine go ahead yeah uh, again uh, the, there's an incredible irony in organizations that want to liken anyone that they disagree with with fascists and nazis talking about the dangers of mislabeling people again we saw that someone j don danielson was just murdered in portland and then that murder was celebrated that evening by members of antifa saying we killed a fascist we celebrate that yet you came on here cheerfully labeling people fascist if they are against teachers unions and have too many flags up and things that. like that so the that's what you said. Those were examples that at all. of fascism, hypernationalism, and fascism. No, actually, exactly what um, I would love people to just go back and watch the VOD. What I actually said was that um, these were examples of hyper patriotism, and they can represent a the a, a stream or a uh, a current of fascism that's running in our country. Okay, I so would you argue... like into actions, right? So yeah. you make comparisons. Oh, but, but that's that, very yeah, different, yeah, sure. though. That's exactly but that's very different. Yeah, though. Apparently, you don't think that's dangerous. Wait, 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 no, like. Wait, you're, 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 we do gotta let him respond. You're like five, you got five minutes on the clock on him. I mean, uh, and like you constantly do this. You say saying someone executed someone is bad because they're innocent until proven guilty. Then 30 seconds later, you say, oh, but the police executed someone as if they're not innocent until proven guilty. You say that it's bad to call people terrorists. Then you go right off and say, look at all of these white nationalist terrorists, thereby labeling them. I could, this was a point I actually was trying, I assumed I would agree with you actually. I think that white nationalists are terrorists. This was a point I thought we could agree on that when I asked you earlier, I said, do you think Nazis are terrorists? You said, well, I'd be careful to label them that. And then you proceed to go on and do just that later in the conversation. So you seem to have no qualms about making those justifications and Wait those labels. So it just seems odd to me how you'll willingly, like you get in this high horse and say, how dare you label people terrorists? Now, as to what happened to that old man specifically, yeah, I thought that that was really bad. And I thought that Trump was wrong to come out and assume motive to him without having proof of it. That's certainly something that's wrong. That's something that we should condemn Trump for, and I did. Now, was that old man, like, it wasn't as heinous as some people thought. He was pushed, but it wasn't like he was brutally attacked. Uh, I still thought it was bad, and I thought he was playing that violence. reprimanded for it, though. Now, having said that, and again, the question that lies before us is, as I said about 40 minutes ago, what we'll end up seeing is you're going to have to lay on the fact that, well, okay, although we see the Antifa group in Portland that's running the show there, Rose City Antifa, running yeah, the they're engaged in violence, and that would, by the definition, meet the definition of terrorism. And the John Gun Gun Club, yeah, that's engaged in violence, and that would be terrorism. And these other Antifa groups that engaged in black blocks that are doing things like intentionally shining lasers into police officers' eyes to blind them, firebombing police stations, uh, using bricks and weapons and slingshots, uh, spike strips, things like that. All of those things are violence and intimidation of a civilian population to achieve a political end. But you just default back to, well, but there could be Antifa organizations out there that aren't embracing this violence. You say there that are. you know a lot of them, but, but you haven't are. showed me any examples of them saying, oh, by the way, we don't engage in violence whatsoever. You just said, well, there was a group called an anti-fascist committee that Einstein was a member of back the day, and that was Antifa. They didn't call themselves Antifa. Maybe they did. I'm willing to see proof of that. But again, we're talking about Antifa the way that it's known with the symbolism that's engaged with the original German group that they were inspired by, the anti-fascista group, that, by the way, was largely responsible for the rise of Nazism because they, too, terrorized anyone that they deemed fascist, primarily capitalists. And through that terrorism, it encouraged people to be willing to side with the Nazis because the Nazis actually fought a back against the anti-fascista. So it was two horrible organizations engaged in mutual combat that forced people to make a horrible, terrible decision to join with one of these two groups. But what we can see is all this violence that's occurring. And again, 
I'm not saying that everyone that says, hey, I identify with Antifa is a terrorist. Just like I'm not saying that everyone that says, yes, I identify with Richard Spencer's group in the alt-right is a terrorist. But they are engaged in an organization that they know use violent tactics and have harmed people and have killed people. And they are willfully engaged in that. So they might not themselves be willing to engage in that violence, but they're supporting a group that does. And we need to be able to call out these tactics because they've been so destructive, caused over $2 billion worth of damage, primarily to inner city people of color neighborhoods. And it's absolutely disgusting. This organization needs to be called out. I provided evidence that they are, in fact, organized as the Department of Homeland Security private messages. No, have they been did released not. No, he show. did not. I've shown an example of Antifa in their own words, celebrating heinous acts nope. of murder, Watch the heinous acts of attacking Watch the ICE facilities and things like that. And the fact that you just default to not being able to defend any of that and just saying, What's well, bad to call people uh, terrorists? Rob, and, uh, sure. I do want to go back. You've been going for exactly five minutes now. Yeah, that's fair. I do want to. I do want to turn fair it back enough. to you, Mama. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I just. I just want to be like. This is just a side thing. I'm not going to really make an argument off of this yet. But can I just be clear in that? Um. Did you not just say that? Um. That the anti-fascists in Nazi Germany were a horrible organization. Did you equivocate between the Nazis and the anti-fascists in Germany? No, I accurately depicted what would happen, that they were they helped lead to the rise of the Nazis by attacking innocent civilians. So you're blaming the Jews. Then you're the blaming Nazis a group of Jews for the rise of the Nazis. Let me just, I just want to be charitable. I'm saying, no, I'm talking about history. And I'm saying that because there was an organization, and it wasn't all Jews, that were violently attacking civilians, it allowed Hitler to use that as an excuse to get civilians on his side. If but you want to didn't... ignore history to virtue signal, that's I mean, fine. Do you but have... that's the wait, wait, that you're alleging that you're alleging that a group of, by the way, historically, it was largely Jewish fighting against the rounding up of their people by the Nazi regime was somehow somehow contributed to the rise of fascism and Nazism. Like, to me, that just seems like, I mean, I don't know, like, vi like that does sound like 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 a like you're blaming the victims of Nazism for the rise of no, Nazism. They Again, this you're, you're is you're equivocating this is a group that fought against the Nazis. The it's like saying, well, in Charlottesville, the uh, the Antifa were the good guys. No, they were bad as well. That doesn't justify wait, the behavior of the Nazis. Wait, so you're it saying, was wait, let me like, would you would you say that like would you say then that like Jewish people who resisted? Are you saying that Jewish people who resisted being put into um, concentration camps were bad because they fought back? Because that's what it sounds no, like. That's what it sounds I'm like you're that saying. The organization of anti fascista Germany that started attacking innocent civilians that had nothing to do with Nazism. Wait, when, did they attack, the Nazis when did they attack? When did they attack? When they attack innocent civilians? That was one of the thoughts they got. They were communists. I mean, they were violent um, communists. And I've the, never, the Nazis in all of my research of this group, I've never heard of them uh, doing uh, attacks against civilians. They were particularly struggling against the Nazi party specifically. Like that was why they were founded that way. They were struggling against the rising Nazi party in Germany. So like, I don't know, to this, me, it sounds like, to me, like, it sounds like right now you're willing to step in this like pile of like justify, just like, like blaming the rise of Hitler on Jewish people who fought against Hitler. And to me, that just seems like, again, another example of you just like being willing to engage in whatever to avoid admitting that you, you've gone way too over far and trying to label a group as a terrorist organization. And again, you made a number of, of repeated claims about, um, about, whether there has been this amount of damage or whatever or or whatnot, but none of those I've I've not seen any 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 statistics that even would bear out to prove that that would be a an, a, a terrorist organization. In fact, um, I have like literally right here I have the stat the statistics from from at least as 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 uh, recent as I could get um, during the BLM protests um, of dozens and dozens of federal arrests. None of them were charged with being members of a group. None of them were found to be tied to any group called anti called called Antifa. Or, or anti-fascism. Most of these federal charges were people who engaged in independent um, looting or violent behavior that was motivated by themselves. And while there may be some group um, in uh, in 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 a place like 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 perhaps you could point to Rose City Antifa. I don't know enough about the specifics of their organization. I certainly um, wouldn't feel comfortable labeling them a terrorist organization um, offhandedly. Um, but maybe you could point to them and say, hey, maybe this group is engaging in some ta in some tactics that are reprehensible. 
That doesn't mean that everyone else who does. Again, you have the same problem of conflating an entire belief system that has an, an unfathomable, like an unbelievably rich history with many different groups, including the one that I cited, like that, that Albert Einstein belonged to, um, that, uh, that, that throughout history have, have represented all walks of life and many different creeds. Their one uniting principle is that they disagree um, with the rise of fascism and they find fascism uniquely dangerous. Also, you've accused me a couple of times in your, in your previous rant of doing things that I didn't do. And I just urge people, please go watch the VOD. I, I promise you that you will find that none of those allegations are true. Um, I, I never once um, made a, a, a spurious claim of fascism, nor do I think that accusing somebody of being uh, of, of being fascistic or, be, or having fascistic tendencies is even close to the same as trying to label an entire creed um, a terrorist organization. I do want to let Rob respond to this, and then we're going to go into uh, ending statements. Sure. So again, you see the conflation. Uh, uh, this is a classic tactic that you see from a lot of people that want to be perpetual victims, that they're unable to, this is exactly what, what we saw at Charlottesville. So for what? example, they say, well, Richard Spencer and his group, which I agree are incredibly heinous, are bad. Therefore, the other people engaged on violence on the other side must be good people. Citing statistical facts about the fact that we could see that a lot of the abusive behavior that was coming from the anti-fascista group that was directed at civilians and not just to government agents is what one of the strategies that allowed the Nazis to obtain the kind of power that they got through the civilians. By the same token, we could see that when Richard Spencer was actually asked what were some of the best organizations, then some tactics that he had for recruiting people, he talked specifically about violent action by mob mentality on the left, such as violent people in Black Lives Matter and violent people in Antifa. This doesn't mean that I'm blaming left wingers for the heinous actions of Richard Spencer. To the contrary, I'm just talking about yes, a fact that yes, shows that this was a recruiting tactic that was used by people on the other side. When we see extremists from one side, there is a horseshoe effect, which leads to more extremism for the other side. Right now, the only extremism that's been given institutional credence is those in groups like Antifa, that we saw these riots occurring over and over, and people that would argue on the side of Demon Mama said, what riots? There's no riots what? occurring here, until they saw the internal polling showed that it actually wasn't popular among people, and then they said, what is oh, he even talking about? Supporters. Now, again, I provided in the chat I have no idea about what nine, ten about. links. You keep saying you're not providing evidence. I have uh, the, I have all sorts of like Rose City Antifa, New York City Antifa, Atlanta Antifa, almost all of the cities where riots were occurring. You could see in real time on Twitter riots being directed by people with those social media accounts. For example, there's also a flyer here that talks specifically about the idea. It says, look out for fascism entryism at a BLM protest. This is from AtlantaRiseUp.net. It was provided on over seven Antifa Twitter accounts that I saw that talked about the need that this is not white supremacists causing the protests and riots. It's actually Antifa. They say that white supremacists may have showed up, but these are being led about? by Antifa and other groups. The link was provided in the chat. There was all sorts of other things in real time showing Antifa directing these attacks. This is going on, and I understand that a lot of people on the left don't want to accept this, and they want to say, no, 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 no. The, uh, if the FBI didn't declare that they were in a group, again, I released the evidence from the Department of Homeland Security that says that they understand that this is organized and coming from groups like Antifa. We can no longer say that they're disorganized. The fact that many of them may have not received federal charges right now, I wonder if they start to get federal charges in the future, will then Demon Mama come back and say, I was wrong. Antifa was engaged in terrorist opportunities. And we can see all over the place how these people in Antifa People engaged in black left are engaged in terrorist activities. Again, I go back and then we'll get to the closing comments to what I said about an hour ago, which was you'll just be left to say, well, there are people that are defending these violent terrorists that aren't violent terrorists themselves. So you can't call everyone in Antifa yeah, terrorists. Okay. But the ones I'm that sure. matter and that are actually burning down our cities are Antifa. They are terrorists. And I hope that the federal government starts to go after them as they should. Okay. Uh, I am going to do something that I hope goes well. Since it is any statements, I think I can do it. I need to use the bathroom horribly, so I'm gonna uh, throw it first over to. Um, uh, does anybody want to particularly go first? Anyone want to particularly go it last? It doesn't matter to me. Okay, uh, uh, then Rob, I'm gonna have you go first. Uh, so you can, since you've already got the momentum, you can just keep the ball rolling, and then I'll throw it over to Demon Mama. I'll be right back. Five around five minutes. Yeah, it's fair. five minutes is as long as it can be. Okay, so. What we end up seeing throughout this debate is something that I think you see a lot of techniques. Now, I'll fully concede the position of this. 
that I can't say that every single person that says that they associate with Antifa is themselves a terrorist. That doesn't mean that the group's not a terrorist group. By the same token, I can't say that every single person that calls themselves uh, a white nationalist is a terrorist, but it is still a terrorist group because the people that are running these organizations embrace violence. We know that the original anti-fascista movement was a group that embraced violence. We can see that the problem with this, as Demon Mama showed us quite clearly, is that it, we can't even define exactly what fascism is. You end up saying things like, no. well, it's hyper-nationalism. And then I'm like, well, what's hyper-nationalism? Well, it's exceptionalism. So anyone that thinks their country is exceptional, well, no, like a good example would be at the RNC. We saw all the American flags and them talking about the teachers' unions being terrible. I've also showed evidence from Rome City Antifa's page, which again is the biggest Antifa organization in Portland, which has been riding for about 100 days now. I showed how they True. define fascism as all sorts of things like being against communism and other things such as that, that you could literally then insert whoever you perceive as an enemy is a fascism. You can see all through the chat of Dylan's chat, people saying Rob must be a fascist, Rob must be a Nazi, Trump must be a fascist. These are words that are thrown around that are then used to justify violence against them. Uh, you can see that Demon Mama understands how labeling someone like that could be dangerous because she makes a big point of saying, oh, if you label a group terrorist, well, then bad things could happen to them. Yet then she proceeds to go on and label certain groups terrorists and doesn't care about it, thereby breaking the same with the word execution. She had a problem with me saying execution. And then five seconds later, talks about how the police execute people while admitting that she doesn't have evidence. Uh, she doesn't have all the evidence in front of her yet. So you can see how they understand the fact that you just call people fascists. And this is something that goes back to the conversation of, is it okay to punch a Nazi? No, it's not. This is another Antifa mentality. And the reason it's not is it's only okay to punch someone if they're phys offering physical violence to you at that moment and you are defending yourself. Because once you say someone it's okay to punch a fascist or a Nazi, it's a quick step away from saying everyone I disagree with is a fascist or a Nazi. Or, oh, you're behaving in behaviors that are fascist tangent you have the American flag up there, you're supporting Trump, you're against communists, you're against the teachers unions. These sorts of things are what lead to the mass violence that we see. Again, we can see that the majority of this violence has occurred in inner city neighborhoods. We, there wasn't one word mentioned about the fact that I've actually showed that there were Black Lives Matter organizations worry, of people that associate with them or people that just associated with peaceful protests asking Antifa people to stop coming into people of color's communities and riots. We've seen from the Department of Homeland Security that they now say that it appears that Antifa organizations in places like Portland are organized. We see that $2 billion of damage was done in these organizations. We even see that Christopher Ray the other day admitted that although he's unwilling to say that there is a totalitarian group named Antifa, there are certainly subset groups called Antifa that are engaged in terroristic type behaviors, organized behaviors targeting civilians to achieve political change. Mm -hmm. We saw the games that were played by Demon Mama saying, well, we can't really use that definition of terrorism. We have to use a different definition for this and that. All you need to do is open your eyes and yeah, see this is a these concession. organizations are out there. They're engaged in black box tactics, which the John Brown Gun Club, Atlanta Antifa, New York City Antifa, Rose City Antifa, and all these groups talk about the need to bring weapons, slingshots, Molotov cocktails, lasers that could damage people's eyes. You can see the videos of them constantly doing things like having umbrellas and demanding that people not record them as they engage in their violent terroristic behavior. And again, I'm willing to prove that Thanks I can't follow. say that every single person that associates with the group Antifa is a terrorist, but we can see that the vast majority of these subsects that are engaged in the riding around the world, around the country right now are in fact engaged in terrorist behavior. And if the other side wants to hang their hat on, well, there could be a few Antifa people out there that aren't terrorists, then I'm more than willing to leave them hang their hat on that. Lastly, groups, uh, they try to play this colloquial game or semantic game where they say things That's like, fine. well, if you call yourself anti-fascist anti like Einstein did, then clearly that means he was a member of Antifa and that's an example yeah, of an was. Antifa group. No one's saying that a group like that that clearly wasn't engaged in black block going out and damaging people, attacking police, lighting fires, attacking people in communities of people of color, leading to over 40 people dying in the resulting riots. No one's saying that people like that that say, well, yes, I'm against fascism are terrorists. I'm saying that the groups that call themselves Antifa, that wear the symbols of Antifa, that engage in the activities Don't of worry, we'll talk after this that we too, see Hunter Antifa Cruz. using are in fact terrorists. And they should be treated as such. And I hope that they all face the consequences they deserve. When we start to see the federal government in places like Portland come on and arrest them because local prosecutors are unwilling to allow these people to go to prison as they should and instead leave them out night after night, then we'll start to see that this sort of terrorist behavior will start to be curbed. Lastly, never forget, no matter what is said here, we have two examples of Antifa, He's over even as time, heinous as other groups are. I didn't see the celebration of people being murdered in the street like I saw it from Antifa. 
The fact that these groups were defended by people in the mainstream media, and we actually have people like mayors and prosecutors that are letting them out without bail, shows how dangerous and disgusting this particular form of terrorism is, which is using political violence, or which is using violence and intimidation to lot. achieve political goals, the definition of terrorism. Okay, cool. I let you go over a little bit over five minutes so you oh, can wrap it up. No, it's okay. It's okay. You you were you were you were going through it. It's oh, all good. Sorry, it's just now I just gotta make sure I definitely give that to Demon Mama if she goes a little bit over. Demon Mama, you got five minutes. All right. So um yeah, there was a lot to to address there. Um, first of all, throughout this entire conversation, there has been a very, very careless conflation of terms from everything from from calling you've labeled every every time you've brought up protest, you've labeled them as riots, even though um we have explicit evidence proving that not even not even 10 percent of the blm protests that have occurred um in the in the last uh what six months um have have been uh labeled as violent or even as riots so your constant conflation of that just betrays that you're not actually being honest with what reality actually has for us that a vast majority of these protests are completely peaceful a vast majority of an of of, of, of anti-fascist demonstrations are peaceful and even if there are small groups of of antifa which is again this is according to the to the the uh resources that have been provided to us by the government itself the government who you know is the one who dishes out the arrests on them the federal government mind you who is also responsible for black bagging them that even their data doesn't actually show that there's any large scale organization of anti fascists that anti fascists tend to be a a a distributed group of individuals who all oppose fascism, but do so in very different ways. I think it's really dishonest to try and downplay the fact that Albert Einstein, again, was was literally belonged to an anti-fascist group that still exists to this day, that was explicitly devoted, one of the most famous anti-fascist groups in history, um, was explicitly devoted to nonviolent methods of, of fighting fascism. And I also find it very strange. I, I, I've got to say, I find it really, really dishonest and really strange to make comparisons between Antifa, a group that, if we're going to be very, very charitable to Rob's position, may have killed one person in the past 25 years to the KKK, a group that ran a terror, a, a complete reign of terror over most of the southern states. Whether you want to call them a terrorist organization or not doesn't matter. The comparison between those two organizations is is, is just completely out of left field. And then to then go on and, and, and imply that that, that Jewish anti-fascists in, in, in World War II era Germany were somehow responsible for the rise of Hitler is just, oh my God, I can't even believe you'd be willing to say that. That's just like, holy shit. That's just, that's like so victim blamey. But on top of that, like, like we, we can talk about a whole a whole number of things. You've refused to acknowledge the fact that many, many currently active anti-fascist groups are de definitively devoted to nonviolent means. For example, the hundreds of mutual aid groups that exist across the United States whose main purpose is not even to be involved in protest, but rather to provide for the material conditions of the people on the ground, delivering groceries, something that I I have worked with and with fellow with other people who consider themselves anti-fascist. I've worked with them to deliver groceries to hungry mouths. This is what a lot of anti-fascist groups do across this country. You're willing to roll them up and label them all terrorists. Mind you that this question, the original question and the one that you refuse to cede, although I think you should rationally cede the point, is that Antifa is not a terrorist organization. You've been willing to stand by both the idea that it's an organization which has been proved objectively false, and secondly, that it's a terrorist organization. Every single piece of evidence that we've brought up here has shown that they are not an organization, even if individual members of Antifa at some point have done something wrong. We would not apply this standard to any other group. We would not apply this to Christians. There have been many Christians in the, in the, in throughout history who have who have involved themselves in things that your definition of terrorism would be considered terrorism, but we would not label Christians as terrorists. Likewise, why the hell would we would we mo label an entire creed of people, the anti-fascist movement, a again rich and colorful and 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 fascinating um historical political movement all as terrorists because some people who happened to buy into that creed were did something wrong. Again, it's this really strange thing that really reminds me of when Trump uh you know sort of spuriously accused a 70-year-old man who was the victim of police brutality of being an anti-provocateur because that means he can hand away but oh it's okay the police were just beating up an antifa guy. It's weird that the same exact tactics that you are supposedly railing against are being used right now by the president and yourself to label a, a, a rich group with many different people all over the country, some
some groups are, are more centralized than others. Many are not centralized at all. Some people are just individual anti-fascists. And you're willing to say, yeah, this is a de domestic terrorist organization, knowing what we do to terrorist organizations. To me, that is beyond irresponsible. It is beyond any sort of responsibility. And I also note that in your desperation, and I, again, allege, anybody, go pop to the beginning of the VOD to see if this is true. You allege that I uh, was spuriously accusing people of being fascist when that's explicitly not what I said. Um, fascism is a is a historical movement that has been incredibly well documented. In fact, the rise of fascism in Europe is perhaps one of the most traumatic events that has ever occurred in human history. And, and it has affected us for years. There were people who, uh, today who still lived during the time of, of, of concentration camps in Nazi Germany. So to downplay that is just completely silly to me. Again, uh, Antifa is a is a a political movement, and 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 the idea that you can just you can just add the name oh Antifa and say that all of the anti-fascist groups that influence this anti-fascist thought are just somehow don't count is just off the wall to me. So you failed to to, to point out that whether it's organization, you failed to make a, a a meaningful case as to whether it's a terrorist organization, and you've spent most of this time trying to point at random things that you think make Antifa look bad when all they do is make an individual or a person or a group that did one specific thing bad, which I will agree with perfectly. It's rational to denounce somebody when they do something bad. What it's not rational to do is to accuse an entire group of being a terrorist organization in the age of the war on terror, which has claimed the lives of countless Americans, Iraqis, Afghanistani people all over the fucking world. So I just feel like your entire position is one of pure propaganda. And okay. that has been proved in this conversation. Okay, we can wrap it up. Uh, we've both had plenty of time to talk and plenty of times to put into our ending statements to address everything that's been said. Uh, uh, while it got heated at times, got organized and chat got rowdy, I'm happy we had the talk as this is a common thing of discourse that we don't really see Boom. two people engage on for long periods of time, uh, really. I, I kind of just see one community say Antifa uh, is not this. It's impossible to say this. It's ridiculous to say this. The other Boom. side says it is. So I'm happy to finally see two of those collide because I haven't actually seen a debate about this on Twitch before. So I think this might be one of the few times I've actually seen it on Twitch. I'm I'm thankful that you've both come on and then of course I would have you both back on in the future. And Rob, I can't wait to have you on Hippy Dippy uh, in this in the near future and Thank you. to have you for that uh uh collusion conversation with sure. uh with a tag team with drone tech. That makes a great tag team, I think. I think you'd be perfect for WWE, Rob. It's almost out. Thank you. And let me just say thank you to you and Demon Mama, even if I disagree and we get heated. Trust me, I have no hard feelings. And I didn't see the chat. I wasn't really looking at it. Uh, but yeah, any calls to if it was anyone suggesting violence to you, I apologize for that. It might have been people suggesting violence to me. I, I don't know. I don't really care. But yeah, uncalled for. And I assure you, I would be more than happy to hang out with you if I ever saw you in person, Demon Mama. So there's no hard feelings or anything like that. It's a debate. Um, so Hopefully people in the chat understand that. So. Wonderful, wonderful. Uh, you two can stay in here as long as you want. If you want to talk a little bit after, you both have a blessed day and a blessed week, okay? Thank you very much, Dylan. Thank you. Wonderful. Uh, I'm going to roll out and go to my stream. Uh, good talk. Yeah, me with you. too. Yeah, take it easy. Yeah, likewise. Bye-bye. Yep. Blammo.